Allstate Insurance Company. You're in good hands with Allstate. And by 7-Up, crisp and clean refreshing. America's turning 7-Up. Pennsylvania on a cold December day with the playoff on the line. The Steelers against the Miami Dolphins, champions of the AFC East versus champions of the AFC Central. And there is the home of champions, and now you're in it. Three Rivers Stadium, the home of the baseball pirates and the world champions of pro football, the Pittsburgh Steelers. This is Don Kirkie with John Brody. Miami and White will be kicking the ball off. Uva Von Schaumann, rookie from Oklahoma, ready to bang it downfield where speed is awaiting for the Steelers. Larry Anderson is back deep, and he's going to take the ball at his 10, 11-yard line. Here comes Anderson, 20, 25, 30. Anderson cuts to the outside, hits the ball out to the 27-yard line. So the Steelers come out of flying, and here quarterback. Franco Harris is all pro at fullback, and another power back in Sidney Thornton. The pass catchers there are none better than this tandem. Lynn Swan at one flanker, and on the other flank, the most valuable stealer this year in the opinion of his teammates, John Starworth and the tight end, Denny Cunningham. It is now first and 10 Pittsburgh opening play from scrimmage. Temperature 30 degrees. Steelers go right to the right and look at the hit by Miami as Steve Toll, a big 235-pound linebacker from Kansas, makes the head-on hit. The lineman for Pittsburgh, Ted Peterson, starts at left tackle for injured All-Pro John Kolb, Sam Davis, the oldest Steelers at left guard. Mike Webster, consensus All-Pro, is the center. The right guard. Steve Corson, and the right tackle, the veteran Larry Brown. So that's what the Steelers have up front, and that's what pounded the ball out for a 4.6 yard per carry average, best in the National Football League this season. A gain of only one on that first carry, though, they go back to the run. Here's Franco, up the middle, he's across the 40, and he's up close to the 43-yard line, where Miami, one of the best teams in the NFL against the run, knocks it down. Vern Denher, the veteran, is at left defensive end for Miami. The big nose tackle from Alabama, Bob Baumhauer in the middle. And the right end from LSU will be A.J. Dewey. They go with four linebackers, big Kim Bopet campers on one outside, Steve Toll inside along with leading tackler Rusty Chambers. And the blitzer, Larry Gordon, he'll come at any time, and he might be coming now. Third down and five, we'll see if Bradshaw's ready to throw. Deep drop in a lot of time, he's got a man open. Franco Harris, he's across midfield, and he's down to the 40-yard line of Miami. So the Steelers get the big third down play. Ernest Rohn finally ran him out of bounds, but John, the Steelers are starting him out of challenge. Don, I, this, you may see a lot of this today, primarily because Miami covers their defenses very well. They camouflage what they do. Bradshaw said he'll call a lot of plays that lead optional receivers, the backs primarily when I can't read the defense correctly. Harris, his most productive season as a receiver, he rushed for 11,086 yards. He's always a factor, particularly in playoff games. And here is Harris on a first and 10 carry, diving inside the 40 and gets down to about the 38-yard line. On the stop was Baumhauer. Here's the secondary from Miami. Norris Thomas is at one corner. The other is Gerald Small, a veteran of two Super Bowl championship teams, Tim Foley, the strong safety, and Neil Colsey will play free safety for Miami. We're in the opening quarter of play at Three Rivers Stadium. Opening sequence of downs. Steelers took the opening kickoff, returned it well, and now they've driven down to the 37-yard line of Miami. It is second down and seven coming up for Pittsburgh. Bradshaw hit 55% of his throws this season. Right back to Harris, who got the big horse to ride him, and they take the ball down inside the 30. And down to the 26-yard line, Foley knocked him down for the Dolphins. A lot of optional type blocking, Don. In the first series of plays, they had a little problem finding a hole. You can, you can bet Pittsburgh's offensive linemen will adjust as well as any group in the league. They know it's very tough to trap the Miami Dolphins. You'll see a lot of man-on-man -man blocking. This is the case in this instance. Everybody get a piece of someone. Let Franco break the tackles, and he picks up another first. So we come back now to live action. It's first and 10 Pittsburgh as the Steelers continue their challenge opening series. Bradshaw, first down throw. He's got Swan. And Lynn Swan does a dance against Norris Thomas and gets it inside the 20. Another good game for Pittsburgh. A pickup of some eight or nine yards. All right. 
At the line of scrimmage, Brad, saw, Brad Short sees Norris Thomas off Lynn Swan. You give him a little bit of room, and you must if you've got him man-to-man. -man. He'll pick up eight or nine for you. Brad Short picks up the gimme, and they're on their way again, second and one. The Steelers were number one this season in the entire NFL in scoring, 416 points, and in total offense, but they did turn the ball over often, 52 turnovers. Bradshaw having an interception problem this season, through 25. Now it is second down and less than two. They go to Sidney Thornton, and he is hit head on. Norris Thomas stung him, but Sidney Thornton, who's 5'10", 230 pounds, built like a jukebox, cracks inside the 15-yard line. And the Steelers drive on, and Don Shula. Dolphin defense has a problem now. Miami gave up fewer touchdowns than any team in the NFL, just 26 this season. Yeah, but they didn't play Pittsburgh, That's Don. Right. Uh, no one's held them very well. They've beaten themselves on a few occasions, but no one's held them. As they say in Pittsburgh, the Steelers like it ugly. They like the weather conditions like this or worse. It's 30 degrees, and it's going to be dropping. First and 10, Pittsburgh, no score. Bradshaw, good play fake. Now he has a problem into the end zone. Intercepted and lost. It and lost. They had it for just a moment, but the play is broken up. Neil Colsey, the free safety, who is from Miami, Florida, and out of Ohio State. And that was a perfect indication of of when Terry Bradshaw gets in trouble. He's trying to make a good play out of a bad one. He's been so successful doing it over the years, sometimes he gets the feeling he can do anything. Well, this is the be a poorly thrown ball that shouldn't have been released unless it was into the cheap seats. He's trying to make a play, running to his right, throwing it in the middle. Neil Colsey had a gimme and he dropped it. He had it and lost it, so now as we come to live action again, it will be second down and 10. Pittsburgh Steelers, 13-yard line of Miami, no score. Harris, right up the middle. And behind his all-pro center, Mike Webster. Harris gets ahead. Down close to the 10-yard line. He'll be short of it. And now third down comes up and a long seven for the Steelers. Miami defense digging in. They've got the big people who shut down the run for the most part. But Pittsburgh, as we mentioned, had a 4.6 yard per carry average this season, which was the best in the NFL. Now they go to a three wide receiver alignment. They're sending Stallworth and Swan wide to the left. Just two wide receivers. Now they're going to go with two tight ends. Dropping to throw. Bradshaw looks into the end zone. It is caught. The tackle is made at the two-yard line, but it's another first down Pittsburgh. That play was all John Stallworth. He read Bradshaw perfectly. It was a double coverage. When you have two guys on one down by the goal line, you run out of room. Stallworth stopped. Bradshaw threw the ball behind him, and I think we've got it for you. Bradshaw is getting pretty good time to throw the pattern. It allows it allows Stallworth when he goes down to make his break to be able to move to the outside. Had he not been able to do so, Foley would have picked it off. So now the Steelers have the ball point blank range inside the two yard line of Miami. First and goal, Pittsburgh. Randy Grossman goes in motion, leads the blocking, and Harris can't get there. Bob Matheson, the veteran, comes up, number 53. He was the first to make the strike. So the Dolphins. minus two on that one, Don. That's, those are big yards down by the goal line. We watch again now. Looks like everybody gets started a little out of sync. And when they do, it tips the defense off. Good pursuit on the part of the Ds. Rusty Chambers was also on the stop. He was Miami's leading tackler. You see what the Dolphin defense did. Chuck Noel comes into this game with a great playoff record. 11 and 4 over the years are the Steelers under Chuck Noll and three times, of course, Super Bowl champion. Thornton hits down the close to the goal line and again. Miami is there to fill. Those little cornerbacks shot the gap that time. The big down lineman, submarine, the offensive blocking, and the little people who can strike came in and made the hit. <laughs> they don't have any little people down by that goal line. Whether you weigh 160 or 200 pounds, you better become a big man when you get down there. And those cornerbacks are in for that purpose in that situation. Well, Norris Thomas at 5'11", 175, lightest player out there, was the guy who became a big man, came in and made the strike. So now we come to third down and goal, ball at the one-yard line of the Miami Dolphins. We're in the first quarter of play, 8'10 to play, and the clock is running. The Steelers very aware of the upsets yesterday. 
Orm Chark got blown apart yesterday, and the Steelers know that. Here's a handoff. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Sidney Thornton takes it into the end zone. And look at the terrible fouls on the way. They stopped Franco, but they forgot to give him the ball. That was a beautiful drive coming right out of the box, Don. When you get started that fast, 16 plays, 63 yards, eat up six minutes on the clock, your offense gets warm, you get off to a lead. Can't ask for anything nicer. Thornton's a tough customer. 5'10", 230 pounds out of Northwest Louisiana. He was a number two draft choice a couple of years ago. Missed some games this season with an injury. Back in good health and back into the end zone is Sidney Thornton. And now with Matt Barr's extra point up and good. The world champions move out nicely on their first possession in this playoff game with Miami and take a 7 to nothing lead. We'll be back in a moment. Little fake to Franco. We mentioned that Pittsburgh's personality is trapped. Well, it's hard to trap Miami's defense. They had a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations, finally came back with a guard trap. You can see Sam Davis coming on, taking Tim Foley right out of the play. They go in for six. They've got a seven to nothing lead. And that's how the Steelers did it. 63 yards, 13 plays, well executed. They got the break break when Bradshaw was almost intercepted in the end zone, you recall, but Colsey lost it. Now Barr kicks off. Tony Nathan, first-year player from Alabama, takes the ball to the 13-yard line. He's to the 20. Miami sets up a return right end. Tony Nathan, who can accelerate if they give him the gap, takes it out close to the 35, so Miami has good field position for Bob Greasy at quarterback. Zonka, a Super Bowl fullback if there ever was one, and Delvin Williams, the other setback. Nat Moore, small, but he will get open, and Duriel Harris, another elusive small wide receiver. Bruce Hardy, a good pass catcher at tight end. So the Dolphins, after seeing the Steelers take the ball right at them into the end zone for a touchdown, now come out first in 10, 35-yard line. 7.48 to play in the first quarter. Second back through and running high with the ball is Delvin Williams, who averaged 3.8 yards a rush this year, had some injury problems, only 700 yards rushing. There's his offensive blocker, Bob Kuchenberg. Left tackle, Ed Newman, the left guard. Mark Denner's at center. The all-pro Jim Langer's out. Larry Little at right guard. Got Joe Green across from him. Mike Curran at the right tackle. And the Dolphins break the huddle with a second down and eight play coming up. Ball is at the 37-yard line. Sanka, he is cut down at the line of scrimmage. Here's a penalty marker down. A good play by L.C. Greenwood. The left end cut across, got Zonka down low, tripped him up. And here's Calipore with the call. A legal motion against the offense. And that's the Steeler defense, 11-year veteran L.C. Greenwood, a six-time Pro Bowl starter. Joe Green, a hallmark player in the Pittsburgh front line. The left tackle, Gary Dunn is the right tackle out of Miami, Florida, and John Banaszak, the ex-Marines at right end. Linebackers, Dirt Winston, they call him. He's playing for the injured Jack Ham, Lambert in the middle, all pro. And the right side linebacker, a real hitter, Robin Cole. They all hit in this Pittsburgh team. Talking to Chuck <laughs> Noll, he said, it isn't a happenstance we get hitters in here. That's all we go out looking for. Offense and defense. Now, Greasy on third down and about five. Throws it up the middle and it's broken up. He was going to Tony Nathan, who came in the game. And the Steelers had the pressure on Greasy. And they also had good secondary coverage. Here's how the secondary breaks down for Pittsburgh. And there's one of the men who made the play, J.T. Thomas. Johnson's at one corner. Mel Blunt at the other. Donnie Shell, an all-pro, even though he's a free agent. One of the safeties, and J.T. Thomas is the other. Mike Wagner, an all-pro, like Jack Ham, is also out. The Steelers will send 10 starters to the Pro Bowl game. They had 10 players selected. Ham will not be able to play because of his ankle injury. Here's the punt now, downfield by Roberts. The ball is fielded. T. Bell takes it up the gut and right across the 30 to the 38-yard line. So John, the Steelers, after a 33-yard punt and a good return by Theo Bell, will come out with a good field position once again. We'll be back at Free River Stadium after this. 
That should only be a great one. New Year's Day at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Ohio State and USC with very possibly the national championship on the line. This is Don Crickey with John Brody. Three Rivers Stadium, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The world champion Steelers. Out in front, 7-0, 6.52 to play in the first quarter. Second possession for the Steelers. Bradshaw gives off, hands off to Sidney Thornton. The last time he had the football, you'll remember, he was in the end zone. And this time he rams it out for a nine-yard gain. This series of plays, and I know it's funny to say it so early in a ball game, could be the most crucial as we look back in the fourth quarter. If Miami can stop them right now, they're still in the ball game and they can get underway. If they don't, they could get blown right out of the ballpark. Uh, when Pittsburgh gets hot, they get very streaky and they really get after you. Now it's a it's a big defensive series for Miami. Steelers score a lot of points in the playoffs. Last season, you'll remember, they averaged 35 through the divisional playoffs, the AFC championship game and the Super Bowl. They go right back to Thornton on a second and one, and he takes it ahead for five yards. So right now, the game plan is about as fundamental as a straight right hand to the mouth. The Steelers are shoving it right at the Dolphins. You see Peterson handling A.J. Dewey. He's got a big job. Doug Betters is hit hurting a little bit. It's nice to have a man like Dewey replacing Betters when he's not feeling well. You'll see a lot of interchange in the defense of, of the down four linemen for Miami. First down and ten for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Bradshaw takes a look, fires in the flat, and Lynn Swan, despite the cold weather, hooks out of the bat football and takes it out of bounds at about the 40-yard line. He's going to be inside the 40 to the 39. Swan had some injury problems this year, but came back to catch 41 balls for a 20-yard average. They haven't devised a defense that can handle this kind of a throw. They're playing against a double coverage. You can see there's two men out there on Swan. Foley's up short. It's what they call an inverted zone. He's got the short flat, but you can't beat a throw like that perfectly timed. On a first down throw, it's going to be close enough to measure, John. The Steeler organization is a masterpiece in overall design. The draft is the way this championship team has been built. And to give you an idea how successful the draft has been, back in 1974, the Steelers, on the first five rounds, and they didn't have a number three pick, drafted four all-pro players. Their number one choice was Lynn Swan. You just saw catch the ball. Their number two was the middle linebacker, Jack Lambert. No number three. John Stallworth came on the fourth round. The Steelers voted him their most valuable player this year, and he's all-pro. And the fifth pick was the consensus all-pro center, Mike Webster. That's why that's the most important quality of an administration. It's second down and inches. They go to Franco Harris. He's got inches and a whole lot more as he turns the corner. And the big guy from Penn State, once he cracks that first line of defense, can turn sprinter on you and take it the distance. And Franco Harris has it down inside the 30-yard line for Pittsburgh. You know, that's... That's why you, you have an all pro. You talk about Lynn Swan. He's not catching the ball right now. He doesn't leave his feet. He's outside. He helps out by coming back on Foley after he'd kept Norris Thomas from, from coming up and containing, allowing Franco Harris to pick up a first down. Now, that's just great all around play. There's Swan. He moves Thomas back and picks off Foley to help Franco. So it's first and 10 now for the Steelers. 27 yard line of Miami. Bradshaw wants more. He's looking for points. Down close. Way up and it's broken up. John Stallworth turned in towards the post. Neil Colsey, the free safety, came up and hit him. You know, we saw Neil Colsey with a chance for an interception early in the first drive, and he has been coming along. I think what a free safety has to do as he plays and progresses is he has to get himself into the action. He has to play situations, a little bit like Dick Anderson used to do for Miami. Whenever you had a third and six, third and seven, he kind of was in your huddle, knew where you were going, Colsey's getting better at that now. That's the second time he's had his hand on the ball. That's good play. Colsey doesn't like the Pittsburgh Steelers. When he was with Oakland, he turned down a part in the movie Black Sunday because he wouldn't wear a Steeler uniform. <laughs> Hand off goes to Thornton. On a second down and hits the Jerry. He takes the ball straight ahead and hits it down inside the 20-yard line. Second down and 10 carry. And Sidney Thornton, who has a truck, he's moved back in to start for Blyer right up the gut. They're moving the ball every way they like. You can see man-on-man -man blocking, nothing fancy. Give the ball to Sidney or Franco, let them find the hole, and they're finding them. So right now, the pressure is on the Miami defense. It has been, in truth, all game long with 5-10 to play in the first quarter. First time Steelers had the ball 63 yards and a sustained drive off the opening kickoff and into the end zone with Thornton on the payoff end. And now the Steelers are driving again. 
First down and 10, Pittsburgh, 17-yard line of Miami. Harris, and a good play by the Dolphin defense. Dewey. A.J. Dewey in his third year from LSU. He came across and made the stop. So the ball is now advanced down to about the 18-yard line, a loss of about a half yard on the play. Don Shulin, his 17th year as a head coach in the NFL, his 10th at Miami. Shula said everybody's, when he asked him about everybody favoring the Steelers by so much, he said, well, they're good, but we're not bringing our junior varsity up to play them either. <laughs> right now, the Steelers are the dominant team, and here is the handoff, and going with the ball is Franco Harris. They run tackling finally. Bo Camper comes across and runs him down. Foley didn't make the play. He, he missed Franco, but he did make it possible for the pursuit to catch him behind the line of scrimmage. You were talking about Don Shula, and if you, you ever had the feeling that you had a wild, a wild animal trapped in a corner and you knew you better be very careful in dealing with him, that's what, that's what you got when you're looking at Shula and his group. Uh, they're going to bite you if you're not very careful. Well, I think John, Jack Lambert said it best, John. He said, we fear Shula and his preparation and what he has up his sleeve as much as we fear the Dolphins because you don't know what he's going to throw at you. But right now, the Steelers, an absolute football masterpiece, keep on driving. Here's Bradshaw. He fires. He's got a man. John Starworth at the six-yard line. Cuts back. He's not done yet. Starworth is going to go into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. And alive, the Steelers are just cooking. Tearing it up, and look at these people in Pittsburgh. You wonder why the man was voted the most valuable player on his team. He took a play that was double covered. He had no play. The only thing that, that allowed the play to take place was the fact that Bradshaw got so long to throw it. You can see, he doesn't know where he wants to go right now. He comes back to Stallworth, who has made a great play in double coverage, comes back to the ball, picks it off, and then somehow stays in bounds and goes in for six. Starwood had to kind of ease his way down the sideline. And now Matt Byers' second extra point. Didn't get there. But there's a penalty marker down on the field. Here's Cal Lepore. So the Steelers will hold to a 13. All right, the extra point was no good. The assessment was against the Steelers. It was declined, obviously, by the Dolphins since the extra point was no good. And so, it is a 13-0 game. Pittsburgh is in the lead. And we'll return for yet another Steeler kickoff after this. Thursday. The second touchdown of the afternoon, John Stallworth. It's a broken play. You can see he comes down. Now, Bradshaw's in trouble. He cuts underneath Neil Colsey, who's in perfect position to make the play takes the ball away from him, gets rid of three tacklers, somehow stays in bounds, puts him ahead 13 to nothing. We're still in the first quarter. We are indeed 3.57 to play in it. And again, a sustained drive the first time. You'll remember it was 63 yards, this time 62. Here's Matt Barr kicking it off. Tony Nathan back deep. A high spinning kick will be taken by an up back. This is Gary Davis with the ball. He comes across the 30 and is down at about the 33-yard line. And so the Dolphins go on offense for a second time. Tonight on NBC, a lighthearted look at America's love affair with the automobile on Disney's Wonderful World. Then on the Sunday big event, a world premiere. O.J. Simpson stars in Goldie and the Boxer, followed by Joe Don Baker in a special Ice Shine. That's all tonight. All right. On NBC. Let's Miami. see if the Dolphins can get underway, Don. Pitch back. Running with the ball is Delvin Williams, and there is Pittsburgh Steelers there to get him. Dennis Winston, 53. Linebacker out of Arkansas runs him down. So there's a loss on the play of about four yards. It'll be second down and about 14. Both those two outside linebackers, I know Jack Ham's hurt, but Robin Cole and Dirt Winston, along with Lauren Taze, play that run, have great speed. Moving laterally, generally a Delvin Williams can outrun the linebacker. He couldn't on this occasion. You know, John, we were talking about the Steelers and the way the draft has worked so well for them. Another interesting aspect of the composition of this team, every member of this team, the 45-man roster, was signed originally as a pro by the Steelers. Never played anywhere else. Here is a one-hand catch. 
And the ball is lost. Coming up with the ball was Bob Torrey. Young fullback from Penn State who is a good pass catcher. Swinging out of the backfield as the Dolphins now need offense and they are not getting it. The pitch back didn't go anywhere. Nor did this throw to Torrey as he had it and lost it. Well, he's coming off because he hasn't quite got time to allow his pattern to develop. When he comes off to Torrey, he's only trying to pick up three or four yards, get back to the line of scrimmage and see if we can't regroup. Bob Torrey getting a look at the first playoff experience he's been had as a professional. This is his first year in the league. Steelers, they all been here so many times. This is business as usual when the playoffs come around. Third down, long yard of Casey, pump fake, lets her rip. It's going to be picked off. And it's lost. Mel Blunt came across, had his hands on the ball, waiting for it behind him was J.T. Thomas. It's an incomplete pass, and the Dolphins will punt, and they're very fortunate not to be intercepted. This is, the, this is what happens, and it makes the quarterback look bad and makes his, his whole club look bad. Greasy is throwing a pattern on timing. He's got his man down there. He slipped as he's coming across the middle. Gurriel Harris is down the field. He's in a perfect position. He gets down in between the defense. When he does so, he falls down. Sure makes it look bad. T. Bell is back deep. George Roberts will punt for the Dolphins. 3.30 to play in the first quarter. Ball is hit. Not that well. T. Bell will run it back at the Miami Dolphins. That is 36 to the 40. And then good coverage by the Dolphins. Leading the way downfield was Bob Torrey and Steve Howell. And Pittsburgh goes on offense for a third time. You'll remember their first two possessions ended up in the end zone. And we'll be back with the Steelers on offense after this. The Noble, they call it here at Free River Stadium as the Steelers are really grinding it out right now. Third possession, first two have been touchdowns. Right now we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. The Big Valley, TV's most popular Western adventure weekdays at 4 on Channel 11. First and 10, Pittsburgh has the ball, leading 13-0. First quarter, Bradshaw drops, throws a screen pass. Sidney Thornton. And Thornton... <laughs> So low to the ground, and he's so strong. 5'10, 230 pounds. Don, that's that's about as well as you're ever going to see a screen set up. Bradshaw on first down. He's been pretty effective getting people off through the line of scrimmage. Now it's a little screen pass to Thornton. Three linemen out in front of him. Perfectly timed. They pick up a first down. They're on the move again. Take a look at it. You can see Webster, they know they have to get to Bradshaw if they're going to have any chance of, of doing anything against the Pittsburgh passing game. They did so, but they forgot to get to Thornton. Hey, those Steelers don't just block. They flatten people, knock them right back. Here's a throw by Bradshaw, and the ball is caught. Franco Harris coming out. Alluded Tim Foley when he caught it, but then stepped out of bounds. Another good game for Pittsburgh. We have 2.27 left to play in the first quarter. Tim Foley is only one of two defensive players that was on the pro ball, the all pro teams in the Super Bowl years. Here's Bradshaw throwing the ball to Franco. He mentioned before the game it was very difficult to read the defenses of Miami. He's had a little problem reading them, but he's had a lot of time to pick alternate receivers. He's done so very effectively, and they haven't stopped him yet. Gain of some six yards, almost seven on the play, make a second down and a long three. Only Bo Camper and Foley on the Miami defense have been in the playoffs before. There's eight new defensive starters since the Super Bowl years for Miami. This time Miami closes the run down. Doug Betters in the game. He might have been Miami's best defensive lineman this year. As an injured foot did not start, he came in and made the stop on Sidney Thornton. Betters, number 75, is very rangy, 6'7", 250, and hits very, very hard. He'll slip the block and deliver a hard hit. You've got to, to stop Thornton for no game. We're inside two minutes to go now in the first quarter. Miami trailing the Pittsburgh Steelers 13 nothing. Three Dolphin defenders are pro bowlers. Foley, Bo Camper, and Baumauer. Franco Harris turns the corner. And Harris, who has gained over 1,000 yards, seven of his eight seasons in the NFL, Turns the corner. Finally, Norris Thomas, 41, got him out of bounds, but 
It's another first down for Pittsburgh. When you can run wide and your wide receivers are helping you blocking so that you can turn up as they do here, you can see Thornton and Davis are out in front of Franco Harris with no one to block. They don't get to anyone until they get to Gerald Small about five yards deep in the secondary. John Miami is not getting it together very well this early. You think this cold weather's effective? They've not played a game in under 65 degrees this season. I do think that it's, it has some effect, but it's Pittsburgh who's, who's executing perfectly. I don't know what right the back. effect is, Don. Uh, you know, 65 degree weather. Uh, uh, I know they play pretty well in 120 degree weather because I've been down there and uh, <laughs> they put it to us pretty well. But uh, this is new for them. I don't. I, I think when it's a championship game, the weather conditions are almost uh, unimportant. Bill Arnsbarger and Don Shula with a problem right now. The vaunted Miami defense is being ripped apart early in this by Pittsburgh. Second down and six. Bradshaw looking into the end zone. Throws on the run. Wide open this. for a touchdown. Lynn Swan. They had Bradshaw. They lost him. He eluded the rush. And Lynn Swan was sitting out there by himself. I don't know how you can find a man that wide open in the corner of the end zone because his problem was right back there in the pocket. How he got free at all is beyond me. He comes off with a slight limp, but they've got an awfully big lead right now. Look at this. You can see Betters gets away, gets a pretty good piece of Bradshaw. As he comes out, he's got to be looking squarely at Swan in order to find him. He does so. He's wide open, trying to make it 20 to nothing. Now, with Colquitt holding, Matt Barr delivers a second good extra point. Missed one. And the Steelers, with 51 seconds to play in the first quarter, have taken absolute command of this game, 20 to nothing. Gary Bradshaw was limping a little bit when he came off the field, but he'll play with a limp. In fact, he'll run it up the field on you with a bad limp. Yeah, and one of the important things as we watch Bradshaw get loose and throw for the touchdown is that Pittsburgh has been on offense for over 12 minutes in the first quarter. Now, there's no way to catch up if you can't make some first downs and get something going. Is that any good? Only great. Well, generally, you don't even look for that sort of situation when you get rid of a tackler like that. You try to pick up four or five yards, go down, and get back for the next play. If Pittsburgh goes on to win this game, they, of course, would be home next Sunday for the AFC Championship game against the Houston Oilers. And what a tremendous victory for Houston. One of the, really the great wins anybody has come up with in this league in a long time when everything was going against him. The Oilers let her rip and won the big one at San Diego. And here's the kickoff. Gary Davis runs it back. Kickoffs have been short. 35 yard line and now early as the game is this Miami Dolphins have to start pitching. The best in college bowl action on NBC. On New Year's Day we've got four of the top five teams in the nation. First at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time is the celebrated Rose Bowl. This year, better than ever, the Buckeyes of Ohio State rated number one. Take on the number three USC Trojans and Heisman Trophy winner Charles White. And a game that could decide the national championship. Then it's the pageantry of the Orange Bowl under the stars. As the undefeated fourth-ranked Florida State Seminoles go against Billy Sims and the Oklahoma Sooners. The best of the bowls on NBC New Year's Day. Granddaddy of them all. Isn't that what they call it? They call it. Swing pass going out. Yeah, Williams has the ball. He gets ahead for some yardage. Gracie now with his running game shut down by that powerful Pittsburgh defensive front. Starting to swing it out to his backs as best he can. That one gained about four yards. Second down and six coming up. If they're to get back in the ball game, Don, they've got to have a big performance from Delvin Williams. Remember, he was the AFC player of the year last year. He's not just a good back. In San Francisco, he might have been the best thing in the, in the league for two, two previous years. This year, it's been a very mediocre season for him. For them to do something now and get back in the ball game, it takes a lot more than good football. I think the one man that's capable of doing that for him is Delvin. What do you do to get back in? You can't get it all at once, and yet you've got to start getting big yardage plays. You've got to make some big plays. You've got to be consistent in making them, and you've got to keep doing your job and let things take, to take its own course. With the Steelers fans in salute, that's the end of the first quarter with a score of Pittsburgh 20 and Miami nothing. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. 
We're ready now to start the second quarter with John Brody. This is Don Cricky back at Three River Stadium, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And look at the time of possession as Chuck Knowles Steelers are rolling, leading the game 20 to nothing. There, it, there's no way you can put points on the board if you only hold the ball for two minutes in one quarter. But I think a lot of that was Miami's own doing. They haven't picked up a first down yet. They haven't shown they haven't shown the signs that got them here late in the season. They played very well. The steel curtain's been the most responsible reason for their not making any first downs. But they've got good offensive linemen. They've got a very experienced group. They got a they got a fullback that's had a fine year. They had a quarterback that ended the season very well, and they've got to play like they're capable. They got the hombres up front. Pittsburgh Steelers is Joe Green now in his 11th year having one of his best seasons. That's what the end result is. Super Bowl trophies, three of them. Mel Blunt. Somebody said Joe Green's getting some age on him, but Mel Blunt said, yep, but he can still take away your gusto. <laughs> I think Mel Blunt's got a little age on him, but it doesn't show. They're working on the official referee's Cal microphone so he can get the official calls. While they're doing that, we'll tell you the rest of the officiating crew. Tom Hensley is the umpire. Ray Dodez, the head linesman. Dick Hantek, the line judge. Jim Poole is the back judge. Dean Look is the side judge. Donald Hakes, the field judge. And Leo Miles is the alternate. That is the scoring in the NFL this season. AFC, look at that Pittsburgh Steelers team. San Diego and all that offense went down to Houston Spirit of Defense yesterday. Could be the rubber match next Sunday. Oilers and the Steelers. Tom Phillips said it best. He says anybody planning to go to Pasadena has got to go through Pittsburgh first. There's a lot of game left. A lot of game left. Delvin Williams tries straight ahead. You saw him pause, tentative. There was nothing there, and John Banaszak belted him. Banaszak's the only defensive lineman who's not been hurt at all this season. Not all the Steelers came in the first round. Banaszak, tremendous player at right end, is a free agent out of road out of Eastern Michigan after a couple years' service in the Marine Corps, and the All-Pro safety Donnie Shell was a free agent. Gary Davis and Tony Nathan in the offensive backfield of Miami now. These are the receiving backs. Third down and six. Greasy fires. He's got a man. Nat Moore. First down. So finally the Dolphins get something going. Nat Moore, that lightning quick, quick flanker from the University of Florida, who led the Dolphins with 48 receptions this year and has caught more touchdown pass in the last three seasons than anybody in the league. 28. That's the big play. Well, Nat Moore's a fine receiver, but they've also they're also using Cephalo. They've got Daryl Harris in there, and as you mentioned, they're using their receiving backs. I mean, I think they're going to have to start using them on first down because those third down situations are coming up way too often. Third and long is not an ideal place to be calling plays. Greasy now with a first and ten. 1340 to play in the first half. Steelers lead the game 20 to nothing. Greasy, pitch back. Zonka gets room, and Larry Zonka fires on down across midfield and down to the 47-yard line of the Steelers. So Zonka gets his first big gainer of the day. This is the first time there's been any running room for either one of the backs. Delvin Williams helps out, makes a fine block on Dennis Winston, allows Zonka to get up with his shoulders turned when he crosses the line of scrimmage, pick up five. That's the best running play they've had. Over 8,000 yards career rushing, sixth all-time. Said Zonka made all his money in the World Football League, but did all his football playing in Miami. <laughs> now it's second down and a long three. They go up the gut again, and this time the Dolphins are starting to come off the football. I think Coach Shula might have passed along something to them when they came off the field last night. All right, we talk about our matchups, and we've got so many in the secondary with the wide receivers, but Larry Little and Joe Green has to be a classic matchup. Larry Little gets the best of this situation. As a result, they've got the ball third and six inches. Third down and inches for Miami. Ball just inside 45-yard line of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Two tight ends are in. Pulled him Greasy off. pulled him off. One of the best at it. So Greasy might have taken his team five yards further downfield. Beneficiaries of penalty. We'll see if the call does go against Pittsburgh. A little easier to stop him short of the first down if you start ahead of the ahead of the ball. Good play on Gracie's part. Mike still is not going. 
Not our microphone, so we can't correct it, but the people re are, are working on it. That's right. Not our fault, okay? Here's something about that, John. You're a technician. Second first down. Penalty offside against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Advances the ball inside the 40-yard line of the Steelers. Miami now with its deepest penetration. 38-yard line of Pittsburgh. Steelers lead the game. 20 to nothing. 12-14 to play in the first half. Nat Moore goes wide to the left. Uriel Harris is wide to the right. Zonka and Delvin Williams are the setbacks. Greasy goes to Zonka. First down and plenty more, but there is a penalty marker down. As now, the Dolphins look like they're trap blocking somewhat, John, because they're catching those linemen coming. And Zonka's got some room. Don, once you get the ball a few times and you get an opportunity... Motion to offense. You can get much better start if you start before the ball snapped, of course, but they are getting warm now. They're starting to get off on the ball, get some movement in the line, allow the backs to pick a few holes. First down and 15. I, I do expect Greasy to start firing that thing. Well, he's probably going to have to now. He's just been set back. A legal motion is assessed against the Dolphins, and the ball is turned back now to the Pittsburgh 44-yard line. Mark Denner down over the ball at center. Dolphins needing a big play badly. First down and 15 for Miami. Jack Lambert calls a defensive audible. Greasy steps in. Home run ball. He's got a man out there. And it's almost intercepted by J.T. Thomas. Matt Moore coming off the left flank was on the speed. Down the far sideline, he turned into the ball, and then it was almost picked off. Now, this was a poor pattern. I don't know who ran the poor pattern, but Bruce, Bruce Hardy is down in an area where I don't think he should be, which allows J.T. Thomas to come in and almost make an interception. That ball was thrown for Moore all the way. But you see, when, when Hardy starts going to the corner and he's got Moore coming inside, I know it's not designed to go that way. It's got to be a mess up. Might have cost him six points. So JT's almost had a couple. <clears throat> he's going to get a lot more if they start leading him to where the ball's thrown. Second down and 15 for Greasy and the Dolphins. He throws. Gary Davis has the ball. Puts the move on, and Gary Davis not done yet as he gets inside the 35-yard line. So Davis got ahead for a gain of some 10 yards. It'll still be well short of the first down. Bob Greasy wastes very few plays. I think over the years, he'll go down as one of those who, who very seldom wastes the play. You get him in a first and 15, he's going to fire it. Second and 15, he knows you've got to go, but you don't have to pick it all up on one play. He gets the defense back. The linebackers are 8, 10, 12 yards deep. Throws the ball underneath to Davis. Now he's got a third and four situation, and he can pick that up a whole lot easier than third and 10. The Dolphins this year won the AFC Eastern title for the first time since 1974. With a 10-6 record. They haven't beaten a team from this division, the AFC Central, since 73. Here's a throw, and what a catch. And a penalty marker is going to be an interference against Donnie Schell. But Nat Moore... He caught the ball anyway. I'll tell you, Greasy caught three defensive linemen just as he threw the ball also. This is hanging in there. I think, John, if there's one changing factor now, it's that Miami's offensive line is tightening up on the run end and pass protecting. Well, you can see Greasy just got unloaded on as he let the ball go, but he held himself in there. He allowed Hardy to get all the way down the field, as did Nat Moore, finally picked out Moore, waited as long as he could. Pass interference, 31, defense, first down. The yards right now are coming very tough, but they are picking them up. And the defensive interference actually occurred a little farther downfield than the reception, so they'll take the penalty. Ball down to the 23-yard line of Miami has it first down and 10. Ariel Harris, he'll have great games, and then sometimes he'll be shut out. He's wide to the left. Matt Moore against single coverage is wide right. Greasy likes him. Moore comes back at the line. They go to the run. Zonka was hit by Dennis Winston as he got to the line of scrimmage. But Zonka, 238 or 40 pounds, drove ahead for a couple of yards. Down to the 21. 
Miami controlling the ball now for the first time in the game after falling behind 20 to nothing. You know, it's interesting, John. You recall that game we did earlier this season at Cleveland, three minutes into the second quarter. Pittsburgh was in front 27 to nothing. <laughs> the Steelers started to count their winnings then, and they let Cleveland get right back in. And the Browns finally lost 51 35, I think it was, but it was closer than that at the end. You're talking about Pittsburgh's great defense, yet the Browns did put 68 points on the board and forgot to win one. Or 65. <laughs> Second down and eight. Here's a blitz. Oh, man, there were two Miami Dolphins going for the ball with tight end Bruce Hardy and wide receiver Duriel Harris. J.T. Thomas coming on a free safety blitz, and Greasy stood in and fired. He hung in there, but again, it's a blitz situation. Your backs are, your wide receivers are trying to come open. I don't know if it's Hardy who's running the wrong route, but I do know that both Harris and Hardy aren't supposed to be down the field in the same spot. You get the whole story on that replay. Our producer today for NBC is George Finkel, our director, Ted Nathanson. And we're coming to you from Three River Stadium. Don Crickey with John Brody. Ten minutes and 17 seconds left to play first half. The Dolphins trailing the Steelers 20 to nothing. Third down and eight. Coming up now for Miami. They need the big play. Davis and Nathan are the setbacks. They're the pass catchers. They'll be swinging out. Offside against Pittsburgh. Greasy throws anyway, and he got a free play and got it down to the 16-yard line. Davis had it and lost it. I think they'll take the penalty. They'll come up with about third down and three. He would have been short. Offside defense. Looked like Hollywood bags. L.C. Greenwood might have left early. Chuck Noll was an assistant under Don Shula for... Three years at Baltimore, 66 through 68, as L.C. Greenwood. And it was after the Colts lost to the Jets in that Super Bowl, January of 1969, that Chuck Knoll was interviewed here at Pittsburgh for the head coaching job. And the Steelers, Dan Rooney, the president, Art Rooney, were so impressed at his composure over that difficult loss in the Super Bowl Up and his knowledge of the Steelers. Defense, third down. That they, were, they thought this was the guy to lead him out of the wilderness, and he did after the first season, 1-13. And, and there is the one of the leaders of this league, George Washington of pro football, Art Rooney. You pick these coaches, and you think you've got a real leader, but when he's 1-13, sometimes the front office changes their minds. To that man's credit, he didn't. Stayed with him. Joe Green came in the first draft. After the 1-13 year came Bradshaw. And the foundation was set for the greatest franchise maybe ever in this league. Here's Greasy throwing downfield. A great reception down at the six-yard line. Bruce Hardy, the tight end out of Arizona State, who caught 30 balls this season, very sure-handed, goes up with the gloves on. Donnie Shell did his best to go against the tight end. He runs with the tight end right from the line of scrimmage, stays right up on it. You know, the Pittsburgh's whole plan is to play these receivers as tight as you can and make them run alternate routes. Now this time Hardy got on Donnie Shell, took him down the field about eight yards, right on the break. I think it's the best ball that, Gre that Greasy throws. He's a, he's a timing type pat a pattern thrower, and if you can break up his timing, you can give him a problem. If he gets, if he's able to operate, he'll give you one. The Dolphins starting to get their stuff together now. They got a first and goal challenge coming up at the six yard line. Greasy with good movement in his offense. Now he goes to Zaka. Takes a lot of guys to knock Big Zaka. Looking well to having a team meeting over there around <laughs> number 39. He's tough, but nobody's that tough. <laughs> the Steelers will hit you hard, and they will hit you often. There is Lambert, the middle linebacker. He's a sweetheart. Yep, you need some help up front. As he takes it to the outside, Blunt is standing there. He's already rid himself of the block by Delvin Williams. He's in perfect position to make the play, and everybody else comes over and helps out. Tampa Bay, what a win they had yesterday. Not too bad. I think Leroy Selman can play football. Second down and goal now from the six-yard line for Miami. Here they come. Reese throws. It's up for grabs. It's intercepted. The ball is picked off by Dennis Winston. A blitz against Greasy. He unloaded, and there was nothing but Steelers there. Dennis Wilson, a, Winston, a diving interception, and the Miami challenge is stopped. Well, when you've got a weak safety blitz, there's nobody to pick him up. He timed it just perfectly. 
He got off as fast as any defensive lineman on the field. Greasy was just trying to throw the ball away. Did it unsuccessfully. So it'll be tough for Miami to rally back from that. They had the challenge mounted, but could not take it in. Now, Bob Torrey, who is in as the right, as the right running back, is probably responsible for J.T. Thomas, but he took his attention off him because Thomas timed the snap of the ball so well he was in Greasy's face before he could even make his drop back, thus causing a turnover. So here come the champions out of the huddle, first and 10 of their five-yard line after stopping the first Miami threat of this game. Pittsburgh in the lead, 20 to nothing, 9.08 to play in the first half. Bradshaw, he's not fast, though, firing from the end zone. Lynn Swan going for the ball, a little too much on it. Swan had a step or two on the left cornerback, Torres Thomas. Wow. He's not supposed to be fast. He can get downfield in a hurry, though. Listen, that was a man-to-man -man defense. You will not find that situation very often available. Bradshaw picked it out. He will not miss that throw very often. It's the championship game in the AFC next Sunday here on NBC. The winner of today's game will meet Houston in a game that will decide the AFC's representative in the Super Bowl. NBC has covered the entire season in the AFC, and then it'll come down to that one final game next Sunday, the AFC championship game on NBC. And the Steelers looking to be in it once again. Second down and 10, they go to a quick trap play, and Sidney Thornton oh, no. lost the ball. Miami thinks they have it. They do. The Dolphins get their first break. Their defense is going off the field, so now Miami gets the first break of this game. The Dolphins certainly had some tough developments early, and now they get the ball back inside the 10-yard line of Pittsburgh. It's a big turnover. This oh, ball seemed to stay there for ages, nobody realizing the ball had been fumbled. You can see it's knocked out by Chambers right now. It's laying on the ground. No one has seen it to pick it up. Thornton comes in late, but... Fortunately, Chambers was all over it. Larry Gordon strips the ball right here. Gordon, I'm, I'm giving Chambers credit, but it was a turnover. Another development for Pittsburgh. Lynn Swan's out of the ball game. It looked like he, like he pulled a groin again. They got some guys behind him, though, that can play. You got that right. First down now and goal for Miami. Pitch back goes to Zanka. And Zonka takes on the Steeler defense once again and hammers the ball down close to the six-yard line. And the clock kicks on. 8.45 to play first half. Zonka. Slow getting up. Like Earl Campbell, slow going down. He averaged this year 3.8 yards a rush, 837 yards, scored 13 touchdowns. Hardest places on the field from which to call a play. Outside the five yard line with only two downs to get it in. Very tough to do running the ball. Greasy has Nat Moore on the left flank. Duriel Harris right flank. Greasy takes the drop. Throws. He's got a man. Ball's caught. Elvin Williams is down to the three yard line. And so now it'll be third and goal from there. Greasy throwing well under pressure. Greasy said this season when he had a bad stretch that when I play well I'm an experienced veteran when I play bad I've got bad eyes and two bad arm and two bad legs <laughs> well right now he's firing he's doing everything he can to get him back in the ball game and I think that was a pretty big four or five yard play because the score is dictated that they must go for the touchdown even though it's early in the second quarter they've got two plays to pick up two and a half yards the Steeler fans start up it's third down and goal from inside the three yard line for Miami Greasy with the long count. Hand off. Zonka, he didn't get there. Got down close to the one. Coming on a slant. The big back from Syracuse. And it was the defense that was there to knock him down. A gain of less than a yard, perhaps, on the play. All right, Jerry, uh, Lurie, no movement at Jerry. the point of attack, Don. When there's no movement at the point of attack and your back is running laterally, he has not been able to get his shoulders really turned up and in there. Hard for him to make any penetration. They're having a go at it. Well, they got the terrible towels going full speed here today. And now the Dolphins have to go for it. They're trailing 20 to nothing. 6.45 to play in the first half. Fourth down for Miami from the two-yard line of Pittsburgh. They're up and standing and screaming here in Pittsburgh. 
Greasy Kyle signals anyway. He throws, and the ball is incomplete to his tight end, Hardy. Another confusion, Don, on the part. They had their tight end and their wide receiver trying to get free. Bruce Hardy was trying to get underneath the wide receiver. He, he couldn't do it. He couldn't look back toward the ball in time. As a result, you can see they're having a little mix-up right there. As a result, he couldn't even get his attention on the ball. They come up with a goose egg. And so the Dolphins come close a second time, but do not get in, and the Steelers take over the ball inside their five. The Steelers ready to go on offense again, starting off in a hole on the playing field, but not on the scoreboard as they have a 20 to nothing lead. Joe Green again leading the defensive surge of the Steeler front four against Greasy, forcing him to throw errantly on fourth down, and Pittsburgh takes over the ball. John Stallworth is wide left. Remember, Bradshaw threw for his end zone the last possession down here. Then came the turnover on the fumble later. Miami closing in. That's defense playing spirited football, but despite the disappointment of coming close to the end zone twice and not getting it in. Well, they know right now they have to stuff the Steeler offense in order to give them a chance to get good field position and get back on the scoreboard. They're going to give up a few things, as you Bradshaw's saw them do on the first down about. situation where Bradshaw tried to go all the way. They probably won't be in a zone as they normally are in this situation. They'll probably be stuffing people. Try to, they might even call a blitz. A safety blitz wouldn't be bad. Bradshaw is a quarterback who will play with reckless abandon. You don't know what he'll do at any time. Here comes that blitz. Linebacker, they go in after Thornton. And Miami playing it very well. Steve Cole firing a fist down. He was disgusted. He shot the gap. He had a shot at Thornton and lost him. But then Norris Thomas on the left corner came up along with Tim Camper and ran down Sidney Thornton. You can see it is a blitz. And Toll does think he's got a perfect situation. He's able to get in front of the back, in front of Davis. Nobody leading Thornton. He thought he could have made, him, made himself a safety. Just didn't get quite close enough. Now third down and eight is coming up for Miami. Four-yard line or for Pittsburgh from the four-yard line of the Steelers. 5.07 to play in the first half. Bradshaw takes a look. Fires in the flat, wide open, and catching the ball is John Stallward. A mistake in the coverage, and John Stallward stood there and waited for it. I think so far the difference in the, in the ball game has to be attributed to the offensive line for Pittsburgh. They are giving Bradshaw as much time as a quarterback can possibly ask for. It allows his wide receivers to go all the way down 15, 20 yards, make their breaks, and the defensive back is up for grabs when you get this much time as a quarterback. That time, Gerald Small slipped down. It's the second time a defender slipped down trying to handle one of these guys. They've got to get to him a little quicker. The end zone field level replay tells that story. Now Bradshaw on first down fires out Franco Harris. One-on-one -on -one against 175-pound Norris Thomas. Thomas holds his ground, makes the play, but the Steelers gain more yard. They have to fall out to the 25-yard line. A pickup of four on the play. It'll be second down and six. Norris Thomas in his third year from Southern Mississippi. Betters is at right end. Carl Barisic is in as the nose tackle now. Started off with Baumhauer, and he wasn't winning against all pro Mike Webster. So they have Barisic. Big tackle from Princeton down at the nose of Mike Webster. That's a full load. Bradshaw on second and six running. Firing on the run. Puts it up to Benny Cunningham. Neil Colsey came up. <laughs> well, it's got to be a bad feeling if you're Benny Cunningham looking back at a ball floating in there and that defense, you hear them thundering in. I think what caused it was the bad feeling that Bradshaw <laughs> felt before he let the ball go. That baby was up for grabs. It's the second one he's thrown up for grabs. Colsey thinks this ball is coming right to him. He doesn't see Cunningham. He thinks it's going to go over his head, into his arms. He almost came down with a big play, but that's the second time Bradshaw has come away from a bad throw, fortunately. So now the ball is out just across the 25-yard line of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And as we watch the replay, and comes in incomplete. Third down arises for the Steelers. Start with wide to the left, Jim Smith. A wide receiver in for Lynn Swan, who might have pulled a muscle. Jim Smith is on the right flank. They show him plenty of respect, playing well off. 
Now the defense moves up on Smith to the top of your screen. Here's the handoff. Sidney Thornton looks for blockers. He's got him. Thornton is hit head on and then spins off, and he's going to be close to a first down. On a third and six carry, he's going to be close to it. The Steelers think they have it. They do. That's how you keep your drives alive. Pittsburgh is seven for seven on 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 third down conversions. Now they're very. It's very hard to go 50 percent on third down conversions. This is a seven yard run. Uh, I don't think anybody in the house thought he was going to run the ball wide to the right. So Sidney Thornton getting a lot of work. Steelers haven't had their punter Cole put on the field yet today. They picked off enough though. Leading 20-0. They go right back to Thornton. He takes off behind the right side. Steve Corson, Larry Brown, Benny Cunningham lead the charge and the Steelers fire it out. Now they're running the clock down here in the second quarter. 310 to play and running. Pittsburgh in the lead, 20 to nothing. Put up all 20 of those points in the first quarter. First two possessions right down the field. Drives of 63 yards, then 62 yards on into the end zone. Got another one later, and all of a sudden the Steelers, the champions of football, have a 20 to nothing lead. Miami's been close twice as the game has worn on, but is unable to get it in. Swing pass. Gordon catches the ball. He's become a better and better receiver. As his years here at Pittsburgh move on, he's in his third season. Apparently those gloves, John, they've got something on those gloves, like little fish hooks or something. <laughs> that I, I think more than anything that it's the familiarity with the home field that allows the footing for Pittsburgh to be much better than it is for the Dolphins. They're slipping all over the field when people are cutting back, and conversely, the Steelers have perfect footing. I don't know if there's a difference in the shoes they're wearing, but I do know that, that the Steelers are standing up and the Dolphins are falling down. And the Steelers are getting in the end zone, and the Dolphins are not. As we come down now to two minutes left to play in the first half. And Bradshaw, with a free timeout, heads to the sidelines. Two minutes to play in the first half, a break in the action. With the Pittsburgh Steelers in the lead, 20 to nothing, we'll return to Three River Stadium after this. We're back and ready to go with playoff action at Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Miami Dolphins failing the Steelers 20 to nothing. There's Lynn Swan on the sidelines. Ran that fly pattern. Hold up lame. He's not been in the game since. Well, I don't think they'll put him back if there's any if there's any danger for, for future play because it looks right now like their situation is well in hand. If the game gets close and Lynn Swan's all right, you can bet he'll be back in there. John Starworth is wide to the left. Caught 70 passes in the regular season for the Steelers. Jim Smith is wide right. First down and 10 now for the Steelers. They're 48. Here's the big rush from Barisic. And they really come in and finally get Bradshaw. Miami defense starting to come on, as has the Miami offense. The Dolphins just could not get cracked early in the game, and the Steelers were a masterpiece. Right now, the way they've got to do do their work is to get to Bradshaw. If they allow him to throw the way he has been throughout the afternoon, he'll reel you to pieces. It's the first time they've had their hands on him. A loss of 10 yards on the play at second down and 20 for Bradshaw and the Steelers. Swing pass goes out to Franco Harris. Look at that open field tackle. Nobody's told Norris Thomas he's not big enough. 175 pounds, he takes on a 230-pound fullback and wins. Get One a good jump, sometimes you can. But if you don't get a good jump, hold on, fella. <laughs> it's like seeing Campbell come at you or Harris down a swing pass. A bowling ball going through. The game clock is down to 110 to play in the first half. Third down and 21 coming up for Pittsburgh. That's on no hurry. He doesn't want to get Miami back to the ball. Takes a look. Throws. Theo Bell. T. Bell went up, had the ball momentarily, was separated from it by the free safety Neil Colsey. They never give the defense a break. If it's third down and 20, third and 25, third and 30, Bradshaw still feels he's got a good chance to pick it up. And he does it so consistently, you have to agree with him. Most coaches feel, hey, with a minute left to go in the half, let's play, give him a little draw play, punt the ball, and keep him in the hole, go into halftime 20 to nothing. He doesn't think that way. Right now, with Tony Nathan back, Craig Colquitt is on the field, a punt for a first time for Pittsburgh. 
Hits it not too far, angling for the near sideline, and knocks it out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. Well, the Dolphins only have 45 seconds left now, John, to work with in the first half. Oquit comes off, and the Miami offense goes back out with the Pittsburgh Steelers in the lead, 20 to nothing. With John Brody, this is Don Crickey back at Three River Stadium. NFL 79 is coming up at halftime. As we review the playoffs of yesterday and today, for those to come, the winner of this game to play the Houston Oilers for the AFC Championship and a spot in the Super Bowl. All right, Don, the Dolphins are in a very unique position. Only once in 13 playoff games have they gone into the locker room at halftime with a deficit. That being 10 to 3 against Dallas in, in Super Bowl VI. A lightning quick rookie back from Alabama. Tony Nathan comes out of the backfield, takes the swing pass from Greasy and gets out of bounds. But still, the Dolphins have a long way to go and only 38 seconds on the second quarter clock to do it. I think if I had one man to choose to get me back into a football game because of what he'll do structurally, uh, to get them back in it, I'd like to have Don Shula, and I'd like to have Bob Greasy as, as, his, as his technician. John, you played 17 years with the 49ers. Greasy is now in his 13th year. He feels the criticism. He doesn't think he's lost anything physically. Do you feel yourself losing the edge as the years wear on while you gain experience? No, I don't think one does. I think the guy's the last guy to know. It's second down and six now. Greasy stands in. Look out, Bob. Got back to the line of scrimmage and did very well to do that. And one of the officials is down. That happens so often when it looks like a quarterback is trapped. He looks like he's down and he breaks three, uh, free of the pack. Everybody's going helter skelter and he says he's all right. That umpire's got a tough place to stand. He's right in there behind the middle linebacker and it all comes right at him. Don Hensley. You talk about your knee operations. Those umpires run through a few. That's right. Place to be as a referee back there behind the fullback. Okay, we'll take a look. You can see the play's just about over. Dennis Winston runs right into Hensley. There's no way he even saw him. Dirt Winston coming. Hey, the guy didn't have a black shirt on. He'll hit it. Sometimes <laughs> he'll hit if it does. Big guy wearing the terrible shirt down there. I got the terrible truck going here, the terrible towels. And I'll tell you, the steels are terrible. Bad host to the opposition as the Pittsburgh Steelers have a 20 to nothing lead, 29 seconds to play in the first half. Third down and six coming up for Greasy and the Dolphins. Gary Davis the lone setback. Greasy against the big rush. Look at those Steelers pull in on him, and Greasy finally falls at the three. Gary Dunn, number 67, from Miami, Florida. Went to the University of Miami. Gary Dunn just kind of crawled up on Greasy that time. You don't put any attention down on the ground because you figure everything's taken care of. In fact, I don't even think he saw it done. As a result, he ended up on his back. So Dunn led the charge. That's like bulldozers coming through those white shirts just falling back. Finally right on into Greasy. Gary Dunn makes the big play. Led the charge. Dunn is now his third year from Miami of Florida. Fourth down coming up for the Dolphins and the Steelers have back their punt returner T. Bell. Don't forget halftime NFL 79 and then next Sunday the Houston Oilers versus Pittsburgh or Miami, depending on the outcome of this game. And right now, the world champion Steelers have command of it 20 to nothing. A lead they build up in the first quarter. George Roberts, a left footed punter from Virginia Tech, in to kick the ball for Miami. T. Bell standing back at his 36. left and the Steelers come through and Roberts never got his kick away. Robin Cole led the fly. He made a great play. He got right through over the center, got past the up back, forced the kicker to make a move. By that time, everybody was all over the top of him. 
Take a look. You can see there's nowhere he can kick the ball and get it by Cole. When you get penetration up the middle, your kicking game is dead. Zach Valentine also on the play along with Robin Cole, a rookie from East Carolina. So now the Steelers, with 19 seconds on the clock, have the ball first and 10 at the 21-yard line of Miami. How many plays can he get off here, John? Well, they can get off plenty of plays, and I'm sure Bradshaw will fire for the end zone. They've got their timeouts left. They can get off as many as six. Is that right? 19 seconds left. Bradshaw takes the drop. Looks into the end zone. He fires. Broken up. Very nearly six points. Jim Smith went up for the ball. Also very nearly an interception. It looked to me like their, their linebackers were in perfect position. I thought Steve Toll was going to be the first man to the ball. Here goes Bradshaw. As we mentioned, he's probably going to be firing the ball into the end zone in one play. Little corner pattern. Toll. I think that's Bo Camper. Yeah, it was. Bo Camper moves around. He's 6'6", 245, bigger than most defensive ends. He plays linebacker, and as you see there, he's got the quick drop to get back on pass coverage. 13 seconds left now for the Steelers. First half, they lead 20-0, looking for more. This crowd ignites the Steelers. They're up chanting. Bradshaw swings it out to Sidney Thornton. Gets one block and another. Yeah, you hit Sidney Thornton when he's got a full steam going, and you pay. We better call timeout quick. Bradshaw did. There's only two seconds left, but now they've got a perfect opportunity for a field goal. Temperature at kickoff time was about 30 degrees. It might be a little below that as the lights are on here at Three River Stadium. A stadium they build, and with good a reason, the home of champions. Matt Barr was hot down the stretch for the Pittsburgh Steelers, made 11 of his last 15 field goal attempts, and he was the all-rookie field goal kicker this year. There's some great ones. Van Schaumann of Miami had a tremendous year. Franklin of Philadelphia. X field goal is up. It is delivered right through the uprights. And so as time expires in the first half, the Pittsburgh Steelers get some more. But wait, John, there's a penalty marker down. There sure is. I don't think this half is over. And then on a defensive penalty, but apparently it's going to be an offensive call. Get it on, Cal. Holding 56 offense. It's a foul on the last play of the half. The half has ended. That's all. Same man responsible for the turnover. Got called for a hold. Little hook job. Yep. Against the Steelers, Net takes the points off the board. Three points were up. Field goal is not count. It's taken away. And so the first half ends with Pittsburgh leading Miami 20 to nothing. NFL 79 is coming up. Right now, we pause for this message. Pittsburgh Steelers, and they're set to go again now. They'll kick the ball off to Miami. As we're ready now to start the second half. There's Matt Barr. He's so cute that Terry Bradshaw's <laughs> wife says she'd like to adopt him. Rookie wonder, place kicker from Penn State. Wonder how she'd like him if he couldn't kick. <laughs> Back deep is Tony Nathan for the Miami Dolphins. Mike Kozlowski and Gary Davis to either side of them. And here is Barr into the football and the second half is underway. Tony Nathan at the 12-yard line. Sprints out to the 20. Load up. Anderson came down and got him. Larry Anderson. And then finally the knockdown is made at about the 26 yard line. Lynn Swan won't be back today, John. Report comes in hamstring pull. So while he was in there, he was all alone in the end zone on one play we remember so vividly, and it was six points. Bob Greasy and the Miami Dolphins set to go now on offense. First and ten. The Dolphins were down close twice in the second quarter, but could not get the ball in the end zone. Matt Moore is wide to the right. Duriel Harris is on the left flank. They fake the run. Greasy's going to throw. Play fake, and he has time. He throws the ball. 
Wrong side of Nat Moore, who was wide open at the 45-yard line of Miami. One of the few times that Greasy has had time this afternoon. Play action pass on first down. It's a good call. He had more open. They've got, the, really, wisdom is not the key right now. They've got to start winning the line of scrimmage, which they lost miserably in the first half. And as a result, Bradshaw had a lot of time. Greasy had very little. The Pittsburgh running game was, was excellent. And the, the Dolphins was quite inadequate. Talking to Jack Hamm and Mike Wagner, the two injured Steelers at halftime, they said the key to the Steeler defense is discipline, holding position. It seems to be a reckless defense. But really the key is discipline. Everyone has an area to guard. And they really held their ground. Right now it is second down and 10 for Miami. Greasy looking to throw again. Let's her go along. Nat Moore's going for the football over the shoulder. He cannot get to it at the 42 yard line of Pittsburgh. Mel Blunt, 47, an all pro, big as a linebacker, 6'4, 218 was covering. We mentioned early in the ball game that the routes of, of the Dolphin receivers look to be confusing. And I think rather more so than confusing the defenders for Pittsburgh are jamming the wide receivers as you see Mel Blunt doing to Nat Moore right now which oftentimes takes you out of your given route puts you in an area where you don't necessarily care to be and uh, on three different occasions they ran into each other so the Dolphins come out throwing on the first two downs of the third quarter Chuck Noll and his Steelers down their winnings at halftime a 20 to nothing lead Lauren Taves comes in now as a fourth linebacker. He covers the pass well. Dennis Cole goes out. Robin Cole now dropping the throw is Bob Greasy, and he makes the strike. It is caught by Gary Davis. And he's ahead for a first down for Miami to the 40-yard line. Gary Davis coming out of the backfield, took a direct strike on the numbers in Greasy and gets ahead for a first down. The first three plays in the second half, Don, Greasy had more time to throw than he had time in the first half on any one given occasion. You know Shula had to say something. The offensive linemen are a fine group in Miami. They didn't do a good job in the first half. The first three plays are any indication they're coming back to do some playing. They got a big third down play there. Greasy delivers on the numbers, and now he goes off to the run. Delvin Williams turns the corner, starts up field, and Delvin Williams breaks it momentarily and then gets ahead for maybe three yards, and they don't come easy. An early arriver today at Three River Stadium was perhaps the most popular <laughs> guy in Pittsburgh. It's Willie Stargell. He came up on the elevator with Willie. He was there way before game time. Asked him where he sat in the press box. He says, nope, up with the people. Doesn't want to miss the kickoff. <laughs> he was here an hour and a half early. Got the good mink coat going. MVP in the World Series. Got a lot of good things going. Another Steeler being attended to. Got to reshoe that boy. Second down and seven now for Greasy and the Dolphins. He stands in. He fires in the flat. And Hardy, the tight end, is stripped to the ball on a fine defensive play by Robin Cole. And you watch Donnie Shell coming up to congratulate Robin Cole. It's, it's the hardest thing that a linebacker can do is to cover a tight end all over the field, particularly like a blanket, as he did on that occasion. Holding defense. Oh. Automatic first down on the play now for Miami as a defensive hold is called against the Steelers. But I don't think that defensive hold was called against Cole. We'll see if. First down. That Mike's going in and out on referee Cal Lepore. Sidney Thornton, he had an ankle problem early in the season, missed a number of games. He's being packed in ice now on the left ankle. Very unlikely we'll see him again today. Rocky Blyer would be out there in the third quarter for Pittsburgh. First down and 10 now for Miami. Dolphins beneficiaries of the defensive hole get a first down. Greasy stands in. He throws it far downfield. And let's see if a pen. Oh, a penalty. He was going to his hip, it looked like the official, but did not call it interference. Duriel Harris thought he was impeded on the way down. He brought out a white towel. I don't think they count. Okay, we mentioned the wide receivers are being jammed. Now, you leave yourself very vulnerable if they get away free. Johnson's with him step for step. He's in perfect position. He's using the sideline. Actually, Harris runs out of room. Pittsburgh Steelers have lost once here at Three Rivers Stadium in the last three years. 
They're 58 and 8 at home since 72, their first playoff year. And you get them on a bad day. And this is medium bad as far as the Steelers are concerned. They're medium good. It's only 30 degrees. They like it about 20 and sleeting. <laughs> you don't beat them. Miami trying to get back in it now. Second down and 10. Swing pass goes out. Delvin Williams with the ball. Alludes one tackler, and Delvin Williams comes across midfield in a well executed play and gets the ball down to the 47 yard line of Pittsburgh. Dwight White, Mad Dog White, came to the Steelers in 71. He alternates on sequences with John Banaszak at right end, made the stop. You know, Don, it's the little things keep a team from ever being on balance. This time, White is beaten. He's rushing the passer. He comes up and makes a fine. Just, just a fine effort to hold Delvin Williams to a seven-yard or five-yard gain that could have been good for 15 or 20. Pittsburgh defense, number one, also allowed only 3.4 yards to the average rush of the opposition this year and only 47% completion. Steelers had 49 sacks and 42 takeaways. Interception and fumble recoveries. On third down and four, the play is whistled dead as Greasy drops to throw again. And a penalty comes in in the secondary, and a delay of game signal is coming. 30-second delay. Miami failed to get the ball in play within the allotted 30 seconds, so they'll be assessed five yards, and Coach Shula says, whatever. Well, it doesn't happen very often to Bob Greasy, but it's the quarterback's responsibility to get that play off in time, particularly when you're calling your own plays. And he saw Pittsburgh jumping around a bit, and they never really settled, and neither did Greasy. 30 seconds offense. Greasy and the Dolphins had a bad stretch in midseason when they lost five of eight games. But Greasy came on late in the season, did not play the last game against the Jets. They held him out because they had a Division I. But in quarterbacking three straight victories down the stretch when they took the divisional title, Greasy hit almost 70% of his passes. Threw five touchdowns in those three games and was intercepted only once. Right now, he has a third and ten coming up, and here's the drop. Steelers coming with a three-man rush. Eight people covering. He fires in the flat. Going for the ball was Jimmy Cephalo, number 81. Could not get to it, and fourth down comes up. And the Steelers send in their return unit. George Roberts out to punt now. Greasy had enough time to get this pattern off. When you get your wide receiver, Far enough down the field so that he can make his break as he was able to on this occasion. Quarterback has to get the ball in there. He threw it a little high. They have to punt. Robin Cole was called for holding on the last play of the first half, you'll remember, on that Matt Barr field goal. The rule book reads that a foul by the offense on the last play of a half or game. The down is not replayed. The play on which the foul was committed is nullified, so the field goal was taken off the board. Of course, and a foul by the defense on the last play of the half or game, they replay it. Here's the punt by George Roberts. Coming downfield, the ball hits at the 15-yard line, rolls around the Dolphins down it. Don Veselu comes down to get the ball, rookie from Georgia Tech. Uh, what happened is it hit Mel Blunt. Uh -oh. Hit him in the back of the heel. I, I, hey, had, hey, hey. I saw the ball move, and I thought maybe that did happen, and sure enough, the officials saw it the same way. <laughs> so George Roberts and Don Veselu done good for Miami, and they have the ball now inside the 15-yard line of Pittsburgh. Well. You know, the reaction of Besselu led me to think it must have hit Blunt on the heel. We didn't get to see the part that Blunt was running away from. But you won't see it. You won't see a, a punt container go after the ball like this until it comes dead if it hadn't hit somebody. Let's see. We see it hitting nobody. <laughs> well, the guys who count the striped shirts out hit somebody apparently, although they're having a powwow now at the goal line. I want to discuss this in full. Ball was touched by the receiving team, recovered by the kickers, and on the swing. Well, Don, I tell you, that's what I like about, about the officials this year. I think they've done it more than they have ever done it in the past. The problem there is I think they blew it. They couldn't get a confirmation that they could change it. They, somebody had to have seen it hit, hit a Pittsburgh Steeler, and as a result, they give the ball to Miami. But on several occasions, when they've been able to, to know they've made a wrong call, they've changed it. Talking to his offense. 
a reminder on the, to the kick coverage team from Chuck Knoll. Now it's first and 10 Miami. The ball at the 11-yard line of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Miami looking for its first point to the game. Greasy in the flat. He's got Delvin Williams. And Williams is taken on hard by cornerback Ron Johnson, number 29. But there is a gain on the play as the ball is advanced down to the yard line. All right, simple little drop back. It's been very hard moving on the ground all day long. Greasy knows if he's going to get in the end zone. More than 10 yards to go. He better put it in the air. It will be second down and about six coming up for the first down. Second and seven for the touchdown. Greasy with Nat Moore left. They like to run a slant pattern to Nat Moore on these down close plays. Greasy might have caught the Steelers in an offside. Here's a throw into the end zone. Duriel Harris took the ball away. They have a Miami touchdown on the board. Duriel Harris running a slant pattern off the right flank, but there is a penalty marker down. It's against Pittsburgh offside, negated. They nullify, they do not take the penalty very obviously as Miami gets the touchdown at goes. Side defense, penalties, and touchdown. So Greasy with a quick timing pattern off the right flank to Duriel Harris and the Miami Dolphins are on the board. Yeah, Don, all of a sudden we see a game where one team's getting run right out of the ballpark. One call, one break, gives them an opportunity to go in, score a touchdown. Now they're within range of scoring two touchdowns to take the lead, and we've, we've got uh, 25 minutes of play left. Long time to go, 11.05 to play in the third quarter. Uva von Schaumann, extra point attempt, and he nails it. So that field goal that came off the board at the end of the second half on the defensive offensive holding could loom large, but right now, the Steelers still in command, although Miami's up for the first time on the board. It's 20 to 7, Pittsburgh. Mike Current, who's done a good job at right offensive tackle for Miami, goes out now. Injury appeared to be to the right leg. So it could mean a rookie, John Giesler, will come in to replace him. He's got a full load against him in L.C. Greenwood. Eric Loxo might move over to tackle. At any rate, Miami's on the board on the quick slant pattern. Bob Greasy throwing to Duriel Harris. And now with a 20 to 7 score, the Dolphins are ready to kick off. Uva von Schaumann has the ball teed up at his 35. They kick downfield, going over for the ball and taking it. It's Greg Hawthorne, the rookie back from Baylor, the number one draft choice of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Hawthorne takes it across the 25, and the Steelers go on offense first and 10. The best in college bowl action on NBC on New Year's Day. We've got four of the top teams in the country. At 4.30 Eastern time, the celebrated Rose Bowl this year better than ever. Number one, Ohio State. Number three, USC. That's at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Then New Year's Day night, you and I, John, will be at the Orange Bowl in Miami for another great one. Unbeaten Florida State under Bobby Bowden. 11-0 on the year. Goes against Billy Sims and the Oklahoma Sooners. And the granddaddy could decide the national championship, Don. You wanted to get that in. You're right. Good. <laughs> well, everybody's claiming a piece of that thing, but I really think that's the ball game that'll indicate. Well, you I'd better say bring your lunch if you think you're going to beat USC. <laughs> the Dolphins come out smoking on defense now. The first carry from scrimmage. Rocky Blyer carried, there was no gain. He's in for injured Sidney Thornton. So it'll be second down and 10 now for Bradshaw and the Steelers. Two wide receivers are set to the left side. And uh, Franco turns out. Franco gets across the 35-yard line. He got to the 36. He gained about four yards on the play. Neil Colsey, the free safety, came up and knocked him down along with linebacker Larry Gordon. Okay, again, Miami's got a chance. Third down and four. It's a big third down situation. They can keep whatever momentum they feel they've picked up in that last turnover. The 13 points down, they could get right back in the ball game if they can hold them. 9.49 to play. <laughs> Sugar. Harry <laughs> Bradshaw and a friend. Sugar. 9.40 left to play in the third quarter. Here's Baumhauer fighting, and there's it might be an offside as Bradshaw guns the ball out to Chip Smith. And Smith, who was a wingback at the University of Michigan and was called by George Welsh, the Navy coach, the best college receiver he ever saw. 
And to head for first down yardage, the call would have been against Miami. Bamauer was offside, but they declined it, obviously. Offside, defense, penalties declined, first down. They run one great receiver off, and they put another one on. They almost look like clones. They come on the field, and all four or five of these fellas can run patterns. They all look like one another. The consistency really allows Bradshaw to, to care not who's in there. He can pick them out. I think one coach said it best, John. He talked about the Steeler depth. He said the only thing that changes when new people come in is the numbers. The talent level stays the same. You got that right. It's first and ten now for Pittsburgh, just across midfield. Bradshaw fires in the flat. Jim Smith goes up, gets a second consecutive pass. He's down to the 36-yard line. John, you notice they don't change their personality, whether it be Lynn Swan or Jim Smith in there. It doesn't change the way Bradshaw calls plays. He doesn't look around in the huddle to see who it is before he makes the call. All of them are very able. They all come up with big plays, and Smith has done so in the last two. Pete Rozelle, the commissioner of the National Football League, and his wife Carrie are among the sold-out gathering here as Jim Smith cuts his consecutive passes for the Pittsburgh Steelers to make it first and 10 Steelers 35 yard line of Miami 20 to 7 Pittsburgh leads the game 845 to play third quarter Bradshaw is caught he eludes it stops he throws it's intercepted looked like Miami got no it's broken up they had it and lost it they were going to Smith Norris Thomas went up had his hands on the ball One thing to get him, it's another thing to get Isn't him down. Right. You remember that touchdown pass to Lone Lynn Swan in the end zone. They had Bradshaw. Somehow he got away and all of a sudden let it go and it was a touchdown. Okay. Norris Thomas had a chance. There's Pete Rosell and his wife Kerry. Blew in from Tampa Bay last night. They watched the Buccaneers upset the Eagles. And how about the Houston Oilers? We talked about that, but what a great victory for the Houston franchise. For that city, that place must have gone up for grabs last night. Here is Franco Harris driving down to the 31-yard line. Ball advanced to the 31-yard line. So now third down arises for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and it'll be about six yards to go for the first down. Pittsburgh is eight of nine converting third downs today, John. And they're not third and ones either. They've been yeah. third and sixes, third and fives. They've thrown the ball a lot on first down. They've come up with a lot of third down situations. On each occasion, it's been duck soup. Mike Kerr with ice on the right knee. Unlikely he'll be back, and he's played well. Bradshaw on third down takes a deep drop. He looks, throws. Oh, oh. man, what a hit. Benny Cunningham, the tight end. This Norris Thomas at 175 pounds. Boy, he hits like King Kong. Well, Don, we were talking about the fact that there are no little men down there. It doesn't matter what you weigh. Now, he's got Benny Cunningham with all his attention on the ball. Oh, Thomas's attention is on one man. Number 89 at 255 pounds. At the right angle, it doesn't matter what you weigh. Well, it's not a game for the faint of heart. Benny Cunningham at 245 will be thinking 41 the rest of this game. There he is, Norris Thomas. Now it's fourth down for Pittsburgh, and they're aligning in a go for it formation. They're going to go for the first down, fourth down and six. Bradshaw takes a drop, a deep drop. Here's the rush. Here's the throw. He's got a man open first down. John Stallworth at the 15 yard line. The Steelers. Precise and confident on fourth down. Go for it. Bradshaw waits and delivers for the first down. Okay, we were talking about how similar all these receivers are. How many times have you seen Lynn Swan go down on, on his knees, catch the ball right off the ground? John Stallworth is doing exactly the same thing. When a quarterback has the luxury to throw the ball that low to keep it away from any defender, and he knows all his receivers are going to come up with it, it's a big plus. Stands are shaking here at Pittsburgh. There's the magician out there. Harry Bradshaw says, got too much support now. I got to call a play. And here is the pitch back. Franco Harris runs. Norris Thomas runs him out of bounds. And there's a penalty marker down. Don Shula looking for his defense to hold now as the Steelers are down close.
Harris had 44 yards in the first half. Thornton had 52, but he'll not be back going out with an ankle injury. Sidney Thornton. Bradshaw hitting 13 of 19 throws in the first half for 143 yards, two touchdowns. Offsetting penalties in Pittsburgh will come out first and 10 at the 14 yard line of Miami. Second down and 10. 6.59 to play. Third quarter. Steelers are in the lead 20 to 7. Pittsburgh looking to put the knockout punch on Miami if they can. Steelers have not scored since the first quarter when they took that 20 0 lead. Bradshaw delivers and Stallworth coming back at the ball catches it inside the five yard line. Again, Don, it was a double coverage. Now Cozy's playing him inside. He's got Gerald Small on the outside, but, but Stallworth is kind of just kind of picking between the two of them. He stops dead in his tracks. And Bradshaw puts the ball on his numbers right on the break. Now when you're there, there's no one can defend it. That's just a super pattern. It's a double defense. They've got somebody to his outside, somebody to his end. He doesn't take it all the way in. Right where he makes his break, the ball is thrown. So now the Steelers are down close and they send in the power. Jerry Mullins goes in as a blocking tight end set to the left. And here come the big backs. Franco Harris turns the corner. Did he get in? He was knocked out of bounds just inside the one-yard line. Norris Thomas saved a touchdown, if but for the moment. First and goal. You talk about specific abilities. Franco Harris, when you get down by the goal line, his board is to run traps into the end zone. They've got a fine trapping team, but it's very hard to do so against the Dolphins. As a result, they get everybody to get a piece, give him a wide one. He's got the speed to take it in there and picks up four tough In winning the AFC Central Division for the sixth straight year and the seventh time in the last eight seasons, the Steelers are in the playoffs for an eighth consecutive year, tying the record originally set by Dallas. And now they're looking for their fourth touchdown. They get it. Blyer on the slant. Rocky Blyer rockets off tackle. And he's in the end zone for a touchdown, and Pittsburgh is in the lead 26 to 7. That's just a great play. The one chance that Doris Thomas had to come up with an interception in the middle of the drive could have stopped it. When they didn't, Pittsburgh took total control of the drive. I guess it's the characteristic of a great football team. Don't let a little adversity get you down. Come on right back. We've got a lot of football left. These guys love to play it, and they're putting it to them. Matt Barr looking for the point after. And he's three for four now in point after. This is Don Crickey with John Brody back at Three River Stadium, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. 6.02 to play third quarter. Steelers 27, Miami Dolphins 7. And now Matt Barr is ready to kick off as again the Steelers take it into the end zone after a sustained drive. 69 yards this time, their longest of the day. Tony Nathan, Gary Davis, Mike Kozlowski back deep for Miami. Here's the spinning kick, and Nathan will take the ball at the 15. Tony Nathan, he's trouble if he breaks that thrust, and Tony Nathan gets across the 35 out to the 38. Tonight on NBC, a lighthearted look at America's love affair with the automobile on Disney's Wonderful World. And then on the Sunday big event, a world premiere, O.J. Simpson stars in Goldie and the Boxer. O.J. Simpson, an accomplished actor in his first producing role also of a television motion picture, so we wish O.J. all the best tonight. Also, he's going to be a third man in the booth down in the Rose Bowl, Donnie. He will be there to watch the Trojans go against Ohio State, then followed by, following O.J.'s movie, Goldie and the Boxer, Joe Don Baker in a special eye shine. That's tonight on NBC. Right now, it's first and 10 Miami. Greasy stands in. He throws to Hardy as tight end. And right there with Hardy is the right side cornerback Mel Blunt, the enforcer. Don, they're playing the receiver so tight right now. You know, one would say, well, why don't you go down the field a little farther? Well, Greasy would love to, but he hadn't been able to get the time to allow his receivers to run their patterns that deep. So uh, what looks to be an obvious solution sometimes isn't because the defensive line is controlling the line of scrimmage. Are those... Wide receivers are running those long patterns. There's some defensive linemen running a lot shorter distance at Greasy. 
Second down and eight yards to go for the first down for Miami. Greasy pumping long. There's the home run ball. Nat Moore is out there. He's and Nat Moore has the ball down at the 20-yard line. Hey, Don, he got enough time. He, you know, that was a superb catch. The free safety, Donnie Shell, was back there. He was, or JT Thomas was back there in perfect position. Greasy throws the ball, and, and Moore comes up with a great catch. It actually was Shell that had some play on the ball, but not much. Nat Moore is some athlete, has no size, but like Lynn Swan, he can put his helmet about 10 feet in the air when he goes up. But size is overrated once you get down there a ways. Now it's first and 10, and Miami starts to challenge. Gracie, pitch back. Melvin Williams tries to turn the corner, and Robin Cole, a number one selection back in 77, Laying outside linebacker shoots the gap. Makes the play in the backfield. There's a loss of five yards. It'll be second down and 15. These Steeler linebackers are trimmed down, too. There's nobody carrying any extra weight out there. Lambert, the middle linebacker, plays at about 218. But he hits like about 270. Jack Lambert, he was a quarterback for a while. College. Kent State. We've seen very little of Lambert today, and primarily because the defensive line is doing such a fine job. He's not getting through the first wall. Gracie, look at second and 15, end zone ball. Matt Moore is going to go up, but he does not come down with it. Mel Blunt and Donnie Shell went up with him. Joe Green was a charging, and there might be a penalty marker down. There is. Somebody was holding. Joe Green in there taking away some gusto once again. Yeah, they didn't hold him very long because they got back there in a hurry. It's a rough group, these Steelers. Somebody once said these Steelers think they're tough, and they're right. Here's Holding Ken. number 68, offense, second down. Eric Loxo's got a big job handling uh, L.C. Greenwood. It's okay to hold, don't get caught. Second down at 25 now. So a fifth defensive back goes in. Dwayne Woodruff, a rookie from Louisville, the fastest player on the Steeler team, goes in number 49. 3.36 left to play in the third quarter. Miami goes to its receiving set of running backs. Tony Nathan and Gary Davis. Right now there's a break in the action. Lambert comes over for some counsel, and we'll be back after this. Don Shula said at a football banquet last spring that 1979 is the end of the 70s and the Dolphins plan to march out of the 70s with heads held high. Well, they'll do that. But they've got an uphill swing to get back in this tilt. Really do. They're down 27 to 7 right now. Shula thought the measure of his team would come in the playoffs. But he is in against the champions right now. The Steelers looking every bit back. Second down and 25 for Miami. Gracie swings it out. Tony Nathan had the ball. He might have had room to go had he held on. Robin Cole is coming on a blitz. That'll bring up third down and 25. The dominance on the scoreboard reflected just equally on total offense also. You know, just about the time the Dolphins have had a chance to make the big play, they've made the mistake that kept them from doing so. That was a blitz. It couldn't have been a more perfect situation to get a swing pass off. It was all done very well. All the execution was there, and Nathan forgot to hold on. Rule number one, you got to catch it before you can go with it. Lauren Taves now comes in as a fourth linebacker. Sun has broken through now, although the field is in shadows. Lights are still on at Three River Stadium. Bob Greasy setting his team down now. Third down and 25 coming up. Greasy with a deep drop, three-man rush. He throws, Nat Moore catches it. Boy, you pay when you go to the heart of that Pittsburgh defense and do anything. I'm not sure those three yards were worth it. Dennis Winston comes in and levels Nat Moore. Okay, you can see, Greasy's got pretty good pass protection, but even that time, he's getting hurried by L.C. Greenwood as he lets the ball fly, and it's only a three-yard pattern. Three-man rush. Three guys were blocking on Joe Green, and he was still coming. Pay the price in that middle. 
<laughs> Dirt Winston, they call him. Hazardous to Nat Moores. Fourth down and 21 to go. And Greasy sets his team down from scrimmage, takes the deep drop, stands in, throws into the end zone. Duriel Harris had it and was stripped of the ball by J.T. Thomas. It was close, though. He came very close to making a great play. And you can't criticize Shula. In this situation, he knows something drastic has got to happen. They're playing away from home, 20 points down, just a little over a quarter left to play. They may not get down there three more times. They've got to take every opportunity they can to get it in there. They like what they see at Three Rivers Stadium. Sold out with over 50,000. Greasy with 121 yards. Bradshaw with 198 and two of them into the end zone for touchdown. Steelers lead the game 27 to 7. Pittsburgh has the ball first and 10 at the Steeler 31 yard line. 2.34 to play in the third quarter. Franco Harris doesn't get much. Dolphins going to a four man defensive front to try to shut down these first down carries. Doug Betters comes across to make the tackle. Barisic is in. There's L.C. Greenwood. Dwight White. Second down coming up and eight yards to go for the first down for the Steelers at the 34 yard line. You see the two fullbacks and their numbers for the day. Here's a throw to Stallworth all day long. He just runs underneath that deep coverage, turns back at the ball, and Bradshaw with a rocket arm gets it right to him. But now Stallworth is down as Lynn Swan was a while ago. I think he got that one right in him. I think he just knocked his wind out the spire of the point of the ball, it looked like. He's coming up limping. Those balls don't hurt your knees. You know, he's going down to the floor. Now, to be able to get down that low and come up with reception after reception takes an awful lot of agility. We mentioned before that both Steeler receivers, uh, Swan and, and Stallworth, have a great ability to do that. I think that one got him a little injury. John Stallworth voted most valuable steal by his teammates in all pro year, 70 receptions in the regular season. Big day today. It's now first and ten. Pittsburgh's Terry Bradshaw swings it out. Here comes Franco with a full head of steam. But Harris saludes Gordon and then is knocked out of bounds by Gerald Small, the right side cornerback. Franco Harris, his success story at Pittsburgh parallels the Steelers in the playoffs. They've not missed the playoffs in the eight years that he's been there. Prior to his coming here in 72, they'd never been to the playoffs. Rushed for 1,186 yards this year. He's been to the Pro Bowl. It will be eight straight years. And he's soon to be the third all-time leading rusher. There's Lynn Swan. Didn't look too bad. Looking like he's ready to boogie a little bit there. Well, he's able to walk. I just don't think he can run very well. Second down and five now for Pittsburgh. Here they come. And uh, Franco Harris. Nice play by Miami. Doug Betters, number 75, ran down Franco Harris when he tried to turn to the outside. And so as the clock winds down to 1.15 to go in the third quarter. Steelers go in the huddle with third down coming up in five. And John Stallworth slid back in the lineup. Got well in a hurry. Jim Smith comes out wide to the right. Stallworth goes wide to the left. Is Cunningham. Third down and five, and Betters left before the snap of the ball. <laughs> Boy, Bradshaw really lures and no defensive rush comes at well, him. He'll hold and then all of a sudden take off. There's no there's no reason to stand there when no. a couple big fellas are coming after you and they've blown the whistle. That's he moved out smartly. I'll tell you what he did. Start offense. Betters made a fine play by jumping off. The offensive lineman jumped first, pulled him off sides. They picked up five. Doug Betters is out of Nevada and Reno. Offense is down. <laughs> now he's given the name, too. 
So now we have third down coming up, third down and 10 for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Dolphins can get it back if they hold here. Here's a blitz. Better's running down Bradshaw. He just throws it downfield with no Steelers near it. And fortunately for Bradshaw, no Miami Dolphins either, so it falls incomplete. Nope. Only the yard stripe in that area. Gary Bradshaw is great success story as everyone knows, but he did not start out as an all pro. First year here, he completed only 38% of his passes, threw six touchdowns, was intercepted 24 times, and they said he was a loser. But well, he's starting to run out of fingers for a Super Bowl ring. Well, I, yeah, that, that and the fact, I think the reason is that he is fooled very seldom. Now, Miami generally fools a quarterback seven, eight, ten times a game. He has only been fooled twice all afternoon that I can remember. Colquitt punts the ball downfield. Nathan lets it roll. Makes a Steeler hop here at Three Rivers. Ball gets legs and walks on down to the 15-yard line. Colquitt's never had a punt block. As the 1980s begin, NBC starts its third season of Sports World on Sunday, January 13th. Since its creation, Sports World has brought you exciting and innovative coverage of American and international competition. Investigations into the controversial and often misunderstood side of sports in our sports journal. And different and outrageous displays on the crazy world of sport. We'll continue to bring you all this and more in the coming year on Sports World as we kick off the 1980s on January 13th on NBC. It's first and 10 Miami. Dolphins are down. They need the big play as the third quarter is almost out. They go to the run and the Steelers shut it down again. They were the best at stopping the run of the NFL during the regular season. They've been all of that today. Don Shula with a diverse offense that has been unable to get on track for the most part today. And, and the diverse part of it includes Delvin Williams, who has not been able to get loose all day long. Now it's a little too late in the ball game. They've got to start firing it all over the field. Early in the game, he wasn't able to break loose, and I think it really hurt him. Third quarter runs out, so we go to the final 15 minutes of play, and they stand up again and salute the Steelers, and they switch ends on the field, and we'll be back at Three River Stadium with Pittsburgh in the lead, 27-7 after this. In a minute, we're going to give you that address again so you can get a pencil and paper and write it down. Right now, the Dolphins have the ball. Second down and eight. They're 19 yard line. As we open the fourth quarter, and Greasy looks to throw against a four man rush. They run Joe Green off the play. Greasy heads for the 12th man, that sideline, and bails out. Here's that tax address again, or that address again to send your tax deductible contribution to help our American Olympic athletes. U.S. Olympics, Post Office, Box 1980C, Cathedral Station, Boston, Massachusetts. Old Broads, you'll be over in Moscow for a month. Might speak the language by the time you leave. <laughs> you know, L.C. Greenwood's been having an outstanding day. Now, he's been going inside and outside. This time, he's having a little problem getting by Larry Little, Little being one of the great ones. Mike Curran is out of there. He's having it a little bit easier with Loxo, but... He's just so hard to handle one-on-one. -on -one. Boy, those Steelers love to come at you, though. They just dig in. Look at him come now. Greasy stands in, and he's not going to get there. Lambert came on a blitz, but Joe Green and Banaszak and Greenwood were all in there first. It's difficult to call a number because they're all doing it. You ought to give them all 20% of that sack because it was, first of all, forced up front. When it's forced up front, there's nowhere to step. You see Banaszak forcing him around. Lambert came all the way around from behind. And Greenwood is not taking his time getting there either as he goes right around the outside of Laxo, comes right back in and gets a little piece of greasy before he goes down. So the Dolphins fall back once more. Lambert also led all linebackers in interceptions with six this year. Had a great season. George Roberts in the punt for the Dolphins. T. Bell standing at the 50-yard line could give the Steelers excellent field position. There's the hit down to the 46-yard line, the 45 of Pittsburgh, and T. Bell starts straight up field and goes to the 43-yard line of Miami. 42-yard punt. Bob Torrey made the tackle. So a break in the action, and the Steelers send out their offensive unit, which has put 27 points on the board. They lead 27-7.
Right now, we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. We're putting more into our news so that you get more out of it. Steel City News, tonight on Channel 11. Back at Three River Stadium, Don Crickey with John Brody. 14 minutes and 13 seconds to play in the game, and apparently Don Shula's getting ready to change pitchers as Don Strock is warming up on the far sidelines with the Dolphins down 27 to 7. First and 10, Pittsburgh. Bradshaw hands off, and here comes the money back. Franco Harris. So very quick. Once he breaks that first line of defense, he can take off and outrun a secondary. Tremendous acceleration. And they say Harris, and you can look up the statistics, is the best big game fullback that's ever played. He's been in a lot of them, too. <laughs> Averaging 115 yards in playoff game. He's the leading rusher all time in playoffs with over 1,200 yards. He's been in a few. Eight straight years worth and as many seasons in the league. It's second down and six now. Right back to Harris. You want to run the clock? You go to Franco because he'll move those chain markers and get you four new downs. They get the ball down to the 36-yard line. I'd say that Pittsburgh... Their offensive line is about as versatile as any line in the game of football. We mentioned they like to trap people today. They haven't had that luxury. They haven't been able to. They don't get any defensive linemen coming straight across the field and setting themselves up for a trap. So what do they do? They man on man them all over the field, and they've given both backs a lot of running room. Big Baumhauer, 73, you saw there, recently got rid of a pet lion. Said it was cute for a while. <laughs> I came home one day and found out I wasn't boss anymore. Off it went. Third down and three. Bradshaw, quick flattened out the flank. Jim Smith catches it and pays. Steve Toll hit him. Gerald Small hit him. He got the ball downfield far enough, though, John, for a first down. Well, they've come up with a play for every situation. We haven't seen this all day long. It's just a simple little short out to the inside slot man. Bradshaw rolls out a little bit to give himself a better angle. When he does so, the play is almost unstoppable. Perfect pitch, perfect catch. Next case, first down. First and 10, Pittsburgh. 31-yard line of Miami. Quick screen goes out to Jim Smith. Blockers are there, and Jim Smith, an all-around athlete. 6'2", 210 pounds, runs it upfield. He was drafted in the third round. Three well, years ago. Jim Smith hasn't been getting a lot of action this year, but when he has been given the ball, he's been very effective. After the short little out, they give him, a, they give him an opportunity on a quick screen, gets great blocking, picks up seven or eight. Dolphin shaking up on the play. Looks like Tim Foley. He's had a pretty rough day. They... Ninth year from Purdue, Tim Foley played a lot of great football for the Dolphins, including those two Super Bowl winning years, 72 and 73, when the Dolphins had a combined record of 32 and 3. Be a while before some team equals that in two seasons. Well, I think it's, it's also, you know, a pretty big statement when a guy's been around eight or nine years and then he finally gets into the Pro Bowl. Uh, he's had an excellent year. And, you know, getting to these playoffs is no cinch. Takes 16 weeks, and here is Rocky Blyer, the former Notre Dame captain, drives ahead for a first down inside the 20-yard line. Rocky Blyer, the second oldest running back in the National Football League in his 11th season. I guess Preston Pearson's the oldest. He's more of a receiver at Dallas. Blyer had a big year receiving the ball this year. Caught 31 passes. Not to take anything away from Preston Pearson because he's a He's a fine player, but this man's played every down for five or six years uh, running the ball, and there's a little different role there. Here's Rocky Blyer again. And Blyer, one of the most popular Steelers ever, takes it down to the 11. Blyer was such a great story. After captaining Notre Dame, went to Vietnam, a decorated war hero, came back with a badly injured foot, injured in combat. Art Rooney seldom interferes, but he said, don't cut him, give him a full shot. 
and he's played 11 years. Well, you can tell just by Corson's play, number 77, he slides out. You'd think the Steelers were down by 20 rather than up by 20, the intensity with which they're given this effort. Uh, I don't think anybody could beat the Steelers today, and I might be saying this a little prematurely, but they sh show no signs of letting up all day long. None at all. They're challenging again. They have the ball down to the 11-yard line. It's second down and less than a yard after the nine-yard carry by Blyer. Now Bradshaw takes a look over the defense, and I think he took too long. Henley Marker goes up, and a holding call is given, so it's not a holding in the defense that two arms together delay a game. That'll set the Steelers back five yards. Instead of second and one, they'll have second and six. Ball's moved out to the 16-yard line. They're playing like they get a Delayed bonus for point seconds offense. Second down. Chuck Noel with 11 wins and 15 playoff games as coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Looking for a fourth Super Bowl in the 70s. Actually, the next one will be played in 80, but he got there through the 79 season if he gets there. Second down and six. Franco Harris heading for the end zone is down to the five-yard line. Larry Gordon, number 50, finally knocked him down. Hey, he found a he found a little hole at the point of attack that time. We mentioned they didn't trap very often, but on two occasions, Sam Davis has, has knocked out the defensive end as he did then. How sweet it must be to play quarterback under these conditions. Gotta be nice. And Bradshaw has really been the prime mover, though, directing this offense, and now it's first and goal from just outside the five-yard line. Pittsburgh looking to put the lid on. Bradshaw looks, fires. Dawood can't hold on to the ball. Steeler fans here, John, have to lead the league in signs also. There's one up in the end zone. Send the Dolphins back to SeaWorld. <laughs> well, when you're up, you can say a lot. And they're up. Went, what, 35 years without so much as a playoff team? You got it. The good times have come to Pittsburgh. Second down and goal for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Nose of the ball almost at the five-yard line. Wide to the left goes John Stallworth. Jim Smith is on the right flank. Blyer and Franco Harris, the setbacks behind Bradshaw. Harris, touchdown Pittsburgh. He just rockets into the end zone. They've just broken them down. They've run wide at, at ease. Uh, they've run up the middle. They've thrown the ball short to the outsides, in the middle, deep. You name it, they've done it. So the Steelers, who last year beat Denver 33 to 10 in one playoff game, and then beat Houston 34 to 5 in the next, go out in front 33 to 7 over Miami. Boy, Harris knows where the end zone is. Extra point by Barr, delivered up and good again. And so with nine minutes and four seconds left to play in the game, the Pittsburgh Steelers extend their lead to another big command. 34 to 7. We'll be back after this. The Pittsburgh Steelers polka. Well, to go Marty here. early this week. New Year's Eve here in Pittsburgh. They're loving this. Here is Barr kicking off downfield. Tony Nathan will run it back at the Steelers. Across the 20. Pittsburgh special teams come out playing like it was nothing, nothing. Robin Cole was down to lead the way. Just who was the greatest driver of all time? The greatest putter? And who is the greatest driver today? Well, these are some of the questions we will explore as we preview a new and exciting idea to be used on the PGA Tour this year, which may help to answer these questions once and for all. We'll also chat with Jimmy DeMeritt, Lee Trevino, and Arnold Palmer and get their feelings on the subject, all on the PGA Tour, a new decade and a new game, next Saturday. Then on Saturday, January 12th, NBC kicks off another great year of golf with the Bob Hope Desert Classic. Great golf and great entertainment as the 1980 golf season gets underway. 
the PGA Tour on NBC. Right now, the Dolphins doing their best to get something going as the Steelers have taken command. If in fact, they had not long ago. They were up 20 to nothing after the first quarter of play. It's 34 to 7 right now. When the dam breaks, there's not much you can do. I think Strzok's doing the wise thing, trying to get a drive going. There's no way they can put four touchdowns on the board in eight and a half minutes. Mike Kruzak, the backup to Bradshaw, will be coming in. As the Steelers right now have the lock on the finals of the AFC. They'll be going to the divisional championship game against Houston unless something most bizarre occurs here. Right now, all that's occurring is Steeler domination. They're taking over this game. Lambert comes crashing through and thunders down the carrier. You do not see Pittsburgh in any sort of prevent defense. They may substitute a few people, but they don't change their style. I don't think they have a prevent defense. 740 left to play in the game. The Pittsburgh Steelers on defense leading 34 to 7. Their fans have been up saluting them since the outset when they drove to touchdowns their first two possessions. Third down and a long seven to go for Miami. Greasy digs in. He throws. He's got a man open. Net. There's Duriel Harris caught the ball across the 45-yard line out to the 48. So it's a first down for Miami. The big third down play. Greasy delivers. The Dolphins keep the drive alive. All right, as we watch Strzok, he throws the ball pretty Strzok, well. And you'll excuse see, me, Don Strzok. And, well, you'll see also that Harris slips as he catches the ball. Now he's starting to go. Whoops, there he goes again. And, uh, you know, there's, I mentioned they may be wearing different shoes. Tim Fogarty advised me, and he's one of our spotters up here, that they do use different shoes. They come from Canada, and they're specifically for slippery astroturf. Well, they got them. Here's the throw again. Don Strzok delivers it. Delvin Williams coming out of the backfield. Got ahead for maybe three or four yards. Barney McGinley, our other spotter, doing a good job along with Tom Fogarty. As the ball is advanced now across midfield down to the 48-yard line. Delvin Williams comes out of the ball game. There is Lauren Taves. Zonka goes out. Hardy goes out. They go to a little more wide receiver speed in the offense. Duriel Harris comes out wide left. Cephalo comes wide right along with Nat Moore. Second down and a long six for Miami. Don Strzok drops. He takes a look. Swings it over the middle of the ball. Laws off the hands of Tony Nathan. One man was between Tony Nathan and the goal line. That was Donnie Shell. But Nathan did not hold on, and the clock stops with 5.56 left to play. Strzok pulls the string on this pass about as well as it can be pulled. You can see he's got Nathan with a slight lead, gives him as much advantage to get through the ball as he can, puts it right there, as has happened so often today. No result. Hill and his Dolphins have come up empty for the most part. Third down and seven. Don Strzok, 6-5, long, lets it go long, going for the ball downfield. It's caught down at the 15-yard line. Uriel Harris comes down with the ball, so the Dolphins are down close now, first and 10. I think the official needs a little shoe repair, too, there, Donnie. This ball is perfectly thrown. He lays it up over the top of the defense. He's got Duriel Harris running alone. He's got perfect position on the ball. Comes down with the reception. Okay, we mentioned they were getting their wide receivers jammed. Mel Blunt is still playing both wide receivers at the line of scrimmage. But when you get away free, you should get the football. Duriel Harris averaged 19 yards of reception this year. Caught 42. Strzok has the Dolphins down close. 15-yard line of Pittsburgh. First and 10. Right back up in the flat. Swings it out. Gary Davis can't hold on. Lambert hits him anyway. Well, he hadn't been getting much action throughout the afternoon. <coughs> Don Strzok was selected by Don Schiller to replace Greasy after a dry spell in midseason. Started a game at Baltimore. Got knocked out about two series of plays and Greasy was right back in. Well, I, you know, I think Don Shula knows that if Strzok is going to be a top quarterback, he's got to get some playing time. He's been around quite a while now and hasn't really been given a lot. 
and it's time to start playing. Second down and 10 for Miami. Spock standing in, gets time into the end zone. Oh, a little high for Duriel Harris. He was open for the moment. But the ball came in high. The Pittsburgh Steelers with 4.57 on the fourth quarter clock and a 34-7 lead. Look, odds on right now to host the AFC Championship game, which you'll see here on NBC next Sunday afternoon against the Houston Oilers. The upset victor yesterday over San Diego. The Oilers with an extra week to rest. Dan Castorini, the quarterback who did not play yesterday, and Earl Campbell, who did not play. Here's the handoff. Gary Davis runs with the ball. He's not done until he gets it down to the five-yard line of Pittsburgh. So Miami playing hard down the stretch of this game when they are seemingly out of it. Don Shula, though, he'll never let up. As his Dolphins down 34 to 7 with 4.45 left to play in the game, have the ball down close to a first down. Inches to go with third down coming up. Don Shula is now 50 years old. He got his first head coaching job in the NFL. He was the youngest head coach in the league's history, 33, when he went into Baltimore in 1963. Just short. Shula doesn't wear either of those two Super Bowl championship rings. He says it's not what you've done when you want to be reminded of. Have to concentrate on what's ahead. Maybe that's why he's done so much. That's right. Hey, some of these Steelers that have all three of them going, they flash a lot of diamonds. <laughs> Miami now with fourth down coming up in inches fourth and inches for a first down as they're down close to the five yard line of Pittsburgh. And uh, they go to Zaka. He hits the wall. He stopped and then he drives ahead and gets the first down. So it'll be first and goal for Miami inside the Pittsburgh four yard line. They still want to get back on that scoreboard. You know this game is 60 minutes long. Just to get their offense moving the ball getting some playing time is uh, better than the way it had been going. One of their problems is that Zonka has not been in third and one situations very often. When he is in a lot of them they usually do well. Some of the Dolphins kids Zonka they say he's football's answer to the four corner offense. He doesn't run too fast, but he does move the ball. And off. Slashing down into the close to the end zone is Delvin Williams. Apparently, he did not crack the plane. Linesman runs in. He's down inside the one, though, so it's going to be second and goal there for the Dolphins. As the game clock winds down to four minutes to play. Chuck Knoll has been smiling since the first quarter when his team built up a 20 to nothing lead. Hey, the impressive thing too is, is the way Bradshaw has has utilized every piece of personnel that they have on their offense. He he leaves no one out. He's got some things to fire at you, dude. He's got it. Zaka hits, but it's not there. Pittsburgh Steelers are there. He didn't get in. So the Dolphins try again. Do not get there. It's here is Zanka. Ground level. And look at Lambert come over along with Gary Dunn. Well, Lambert, everybody. Lambert was able to get in there because the two down linemen, Dunn and Furness, made good plays right at the point. The rubber match. Houston versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. They've played twice this season. They've each won one. And next Sunday, they'll be playing here on NBC at Three Rivers Stadium for the AFC Championship. And the right to go to the Super Bowl is right now. Well, Larry Zonka takes it into the end zone for the Dolphins with 3.07 to play. But still, the Steelers so very much in command of this game, leading 34 to 13. I'm sure that's very little solace for Larry Zonka. Jack Lambert trying to fill the hole. He and Zonka meet at the goal line. Touchdown for Miami. And 
I think it is nice that Larry Zonk was able to score a touchdown in, poss in what possibly could be his last playoff game. I don't know what his future holds, but as great as he's been, he ought to at least get one today. He and Shuler very close. Shuler said he knew that Zonka was back on the team when he found a little live alligator in his shower one day. Zonka likes to put on the head coach. Here is the extra point attempt now by Uva von Schaumann. Up it goes. It's good. So at 3.07 to play in the game, it is the Pittsburgh Steelers 34, the Miami Dolphins 14. And we'll be back at Three River Stadium after this. Has the ball with field position at the Miami 42. I'd like to thank our NBC crew for their usual good work today, led by our producer and director, George Finkel and Teddy Nathanson, as Jim Smith comes back out. And next Sunday here at Pittsburgh, Three River Stadium, AFC Championship game, the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Houston Oilers, unless Miami does something absolutely unbelievable over the last three minutes of this game. Then it would be if Miami ever should win it, which they're not going to, be at Miami. Here's Greg Hawthorne, the rookie number one draft choice. He was drafted to be the heir apparent to Franco Harris. You know, Don, and no matter who they put in you in there, they just keep moving the ball down the field. Uh, we saw a penalty flag thrown uh, last year. I can remember Houston getting beaten by Pittsburgh in a similar situation to this, something like 34 to five, in the worst conditions I've ever seen a football game played on. Bradshaw had a great day then as he's had today. Uh, but I think Houston is a lot better football team this year than they were last year. And when you can when you can play without Pastorini and Campbell and Burroughs and have a few other fellas come up limping and still go out there and beat a great team like San Diego, I think the, the overall strength of their team is one that can now contend with Pittsburgh. Well, you had to admire the play of Gifford Nielsen and his attitude going into that game at the top of the show yesterday. He had an interview with Gifford Nielsen. Wow. Unnecessary roughness. 56 defense. Time's total. Nielsen said he hates to see Dan Pastorini get injured, but he is grateful for a chance to lead the Houston Oilers to victory. He said that before the game, then he went out and did it. It's first and 10 now for the Steelers. They're down close once again, leading 34 to 14. And uh, running with the ball is Anthony Anderson, a first year back from Temple, who averaged over six and a half yards a carry the few times he got the ball in the regular season. The best in college bowl action on NBC on New Year's Day. We've got four of the top five teams in the nation. First at 4.30 Eastern time, it is the Rose Bowl. Dick Enberg, Merlin Olson, O.J. Simpson will be there as the top-ranked Buckeyes of Ohio State take on the number three USC Trojans and their Heisman Trophy winner Charles White in a game that could decide the national championship. Then John you and I and Bob Trumpety will be at the Orange Bowl in Miami under the stars as the undefeated and fourth ranked Seminoles of Florida State go against last year's Heisman Trophy winner Billy Sims and the Oklahoma Sooners. The best of the bowls on NBC New Year's Day. A two minute warning on the board now two minutes left to play. Now the Steelers will have the ball when we come back second. Mean Joe Green. They say he's nice no Joe Green lately. But he's been mean on the football field all season long having one of his greatest years. If this stays the way it is it'll be Houston against the Pittsburgh Steelers next Sunday at 1 o'clock Eastern time here on NBC for the AFC Championship. NFL 79 to preview the game at 1230 Eastern time. Here's a free football. Miami has it. Larry Gordon. He starts up field and is knocked down by T. Bell at the seven yard line. So the Steelers challenging once again lose the ball on a fumble and Miami gets it back. But the game clock shows just 152 left to play. Larry Gordon took a hard hit from T. Bell when he tried to run it back. That's when you get hurt. He didn't even see the man. They're coming from all directions when you pick up a fumble. <laughs> L.C. Greenwood, he's, he's ready. With John Brody, this is Don Crickey back at Three River Stadium as we start down the stretch. 152 to play. Miami has the ball on a fumble recovery, trailing 34 to 14. Mike Adamley will be in the Steeler locker room after the game. 
to talk to the world champions who are looking like they might be a successful defender again this year. Got a long way to go yet. With the Houston Oilers coming to Pittsburgh next Sunday, here is the strike thrown by Don Strzok. Tony Nathan gets it. Stumbles and gets out of bounds. Ahead for a first down, though. Nathan getting across the 20-yard line. That stops the clock with 144 left to play. You were talking about the fact that Mike will be in the locker room with the Steelers. Last week, or two weeks ago, when they clinched their division, I went down in the locker room, and you thought they lost. Yeah. I mean, it was just like another day at the plant, as far as they were concerned. And I asked uh, Bradshaw to kind of sum up the feeling, and he said, hey, you know, we really haven't won anything. Our goals are set on the end result, and they're about four games away. <laughs> Joe Green says the first 16 games are for the fans. These are for us. First and 10, Miami. Don Strzok lets her rip. Got a man open, caught by Nat Moore, and he takes off. And he can go. Nat Moore is finally run down. JT Thomas comes up and gets him at the Miami 40. And the clock runs with 1.30 left to play. NFL report coming up next. Brian Gumbel standing by in New York. Mike Adamley will be in the Pittsburgh Steeler locker room as the Steelers out in front 34 to 14 and Bob Greasy who started the game in the cold at Pittsburgh and it was cold all day long for Greasy and the Dolphin offense. Well Don there's only room for one winner in this game uh, and uh, Greasy's had his share I'll tell you he, See, he yes. and Bradshaw have been outstanding players in the playoffs and over a long period of time and I don't care who you are he wasn't going to beat the Pittsburgh Steelers today. I don't care who they had playing quarterback. The big fella himself couldn't have done it. Don Shula once said of Greasy, he's the most unselfish player I've ever been around. He's just as soon call a good running play for a touchdown as throw a bomb for a score. And this is the guy next week, Terry Bradshaw, who has to deliver like this again to beat those Oilers. You know, when we, we've been mentioning the, the injuries that have come to Houston, but they also have a lot of players that are now getting well. You know, Mike Renfro, the guy that made the big play for him yesterday, is back in action. Uh, Stensrud's coming back. They've got some guys back, and they're a little stronger. They will be ready. An extra day's rest this week for Houston. Here is Tony Nathan taking the pass out of the backfield. He comes across midfield and down to the 46-yard line of Pittsburgh. But there's a penalty marker down, John, at the line of scrimmage with a minute to play. Offside, deep, is the clock. Stop. The Dolphins beneficiaries of that. Now the ball is at the 46-yard line, and they will go first and 10 from there with just a minute to play in the game and in the Dolphins' season. Straight ahead carry with the ball down to the 42-yard line. Zonk, as you mentioned, that could be the last season for both those former All-Pro players from Miami. Larry Little on the right and Larry Zonka. Well, Larry Little got himself well. He'd been hampered by an ankle injury most of the season. The big games, the great players all get ready. I think Zonka was ready, but the situation never came up where he could show his wares. Uh, thanks for the help in the booth to George Jordan, Barney McGinley, Tim Fogarty, and Guy Monahan as the Miami Dolphins have a second and eight. Strzok throws, and look at Nat Moore go up and come down with it. He's down to the 22-yard line with 15 seconds to play, and the Dolphins stop the clock. Well, I think, I think Nat Moore's expression after he caught that ball sums it up pretty well. He has had a rough afternoon. They fired the ball in his area several times. He's had to make catches of this sort, time in and time out, and he's taken his licks. 14 seconds left to play. The Pittsburgh Steelers in the lead, 34 to 14. Miami looking to get into the end zone one more time to at least make it close. Strzok came in in the fourth quarter. 
Dolphins almost threatened to make it close. You remember in the second quarter when twice they had the ball down close to the Pittsburgh goal but could not get it in. You know, Don, I think so many people will sit at their television set right now and say, why wasn't he in there in the second half or in the second quarter? Uh, in all defense of Don Shula and, and Bob Greasy, and it just isn't an indication that it would have been any different had he been playing earlier because they're playing different defenses right now. They've got different personnel in there. This ball game is history. Don Strock may be excellent in the future, but he couldn't have done much for him today. Well said. It's been the Steelers' day, as it usually is in the playoffs here. Here's an end zone pass to Cephalo. Tipped. Oh, and Cephalo almost got it. A couple of Steelers had a play on it, and Cephalo almost got it. Now the fans start to come over the barrier. They're encouraged to go back by some guys with sticks and big hats on. <laughs> They tend, they tend to get their way, too. Eight seconds left. Okay. This baby did a little bouncing around. I know JT Thomas has been close on several occasions today. He thought he had that one for sure. They're going to have the countdown here in a minute at Pittsburgh. The Steelers heading for the AFC Championship game again this year, and they'll be host for it at 1 o'clock. That's game time next Sunday. Into the end zone. Cephalo once again with two seconds left. Whoops. NFL 79 will be on the air next Sunday at 12.30 here on NBC. And, of course, coming up next today, following this game, NFL report, a report from the Steelers' locker room. As the Steelers are two seconds away from winning their first divisional playoff game of the 79 season. People got out on the field, delayed play for a minute, and we'll have our final play of this football game in a moment. And don't forget New Year's Day. Top rank, Ohio State, third rank USC in the Rose Bowl from Pasadena at 4.30 Eastern Time. And at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, the Orange Bowl with unbeaten Florida State going against Oklahoma. Scott into the end zone. Wayne Woodruff intercepts, and that will be it. The Pittsburgh Steelers do it again. They beat the Miami Dolphins decidedly, 34 to 14. And the Steelers head to the AFC Championship game next Sunday, John, against the very game Houston Oilers who think they're going to win. Well, you know they've had all year to think about that 34 to 5 rubbing they got last year in this same stadium. They're the only team I think that has beaten the Steelers in once in each of the two in the last two years. I think they're the one team that has the best chance. I know they'll have to get Pastorini and Campbell back. I think they'll both be back. Right now, the Steelers head for the locker room. There's our cameras. Very shortly, you'll be meeting some of those Steelers. You'll see them in victory. They enjoy it, but they don't get overwhelmed by it. They're used to it. The Pittsburgh Steelers open up this game with a 20 to nothing first quarter lead. And they had it the rest of the way. They did not score in the second quarter. Both teams scored 14 second half points. But it was the Pittsburgh Steelers throughout. Now for John Brody, this is Don Crickey, the executive producer of NBC's football is Don Olmeyer. Coordinating producer Ted Nathanson. The telecast of today's game has been produced by George Finkel, directed by Ted Nathanson. Technical director Bruce Berquist. Associate director John Filippelli. Now stay tuned for the Budweiser NFL report following these messages from your local station. <laughs> 